baseball and everybody can put up boards and it's the one thing that head coach Doug Plum has made sure that this team is doing is running. They are so they have so much endurance. Yes. I, I like they probably <laughs> could go run a marathon tomorrow, really. Wouldn't be me. <laughs> no. Would not be me. No. Uh, so they're taking on a 3-0 and Moncton Magic tonight, and Moncton off to a pretty good start so far. So as we wait to see what they bring to the table. Uh, you, you look at this team, is this going to be a high-scoring team like last year, or is this going to be one of those uh, brick wall teams that's going to defend? Because in Windsor, they didn't give up a lot of points. No, and it's still very interesting because 113-83 to was their last win, or their first win of the season, mm -hmm. and so now it's going to be interesting to see what kind of points they do put up tonight. All right, let's find out what's going on. Let's get down to mile one and get this home opener underway with the edge and the magic. Steve Power and Ryan Brockerville with the call on Rogers TV. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Mile One Center for our first game of this second St. John's Edge basketball season. Once again, it is my pleasure to have the call of these games for you this year. My name is Steve Power, and in the booth this year, I am joined by Mr. Ryan Brockerville. Ryan, thanks for coming on board. No problem, Steve. Thanks for having me. So, the Moncton Magic coming into town against our St. John's Edge here tonight. St. John's, we're going to see Carl English in the lineup for the first time this year. As you know, Carl's been taking a little time off, resting them. I, I won't call them old bones. I'm going to say weary bones. But he is certainly a weapon that the edge can use for sure. For sure. And Carl's been nursing an ankle injury. So uh, he's looking to have a fresh start here tonight and come out big for the home fans. So... Low, you're too low. Hello. So the Edge coming into town, getting their first win against the Windsor Express on Wednesday. Ryan dropping their first home opener against the London Lightning in a rematch of last year's finals. Tell us a little bit about what do you think we're going to see here from this Moncton Magic team here tonight? Uh, what we're going to see is we're going to see some heavy guard play. They're very guard heavy. Uh, they've got some very high-skilled, high-caliber guards that the edge are going to have to look to shut down. Uh, they're going to be shooting a lot of three-pointers, and they have some talent as long as some size on the inside. So the uh, edge are in for a tough fight here tonight. The edge indeed will be shooting three-pointers. Still sticking with the magic. They picked up Doug Herring Jr. in the offseason in a trade with the defending champion, the Lightning. Herring Jr. was an edge killer in last year's final. And also, big Billy White, former Halifax Hurricane. He is really tough in underneath. We're going to have to see what the edge can do with that big man down low. But the news ain't all that bad. Corey Allman not in the lineup tonight for the Moncton Magic. So that's 30 points just disappeared there. Allman must be nursing some kind of injury. We haven't been told any, but he is not in the lineup for Moncton tonight. And Ryan, let's talk about the edge for a minute. We talk about Carol English. She's the reigning MVP. He's the hometown hero. We all know what to expect at any given point in time. Carl can shoot the lights out here at mile one. Talk a little bit about who else do we look for in the edge? Uh, well, the edge made a lot of moves in the offseason. Uh, they've looked to you know, add a lot of skill and a lot of talent. They've added a lot of shooters to the team. So Carl didn't play the other night, but the edge still shot 70% from three point, which is 70% from three point. I did not get 70% in my entire high school math career, let alone <laughs> shooting three pointers. So that is just outstanding. They are certainly going to come up on top there. 
We got Coach Doug Plum back on the bench tonight. He was serving the first of a little suspension he picked up. Uh, Coach Plum on the bench for the home opener. He's got to be excited taking over the reins this year for the edge. Steve Marcus picked up the win the other night for the edge as the head coach, but we got a nice little coaching tandem down there on the bench. I really like what these guys do. For sure, and I spoke to Coach Plum this morning. Uh, he's very excited to you know, put his stamp on this team. And you know, he said that they want to get up and down. They want to play fast. They want to shoot a lot of threes. So we're in for an, an exciting time here tonight. So the edge really, we, we said the word three probably five times already here. And we're going to be talking about a minute and a half. Who are those threats from beyond the arc? Or is it as simple as saying it's all of them? It's almost everybody on this team. Everybody on this team, except for a few players, can shoot. Um, you're looking at Picard, uh, Nickens, Jones can shoot, Skeet can shoot, Kaplan, English is a you know, dead eye shooter from anywhere really. And the list goes on. Dead eye indeed. And they've got the big man Satnam Singh coming here with a lot of uh, hype and a lot of curiosity indeed. I know my first time laying eyes on him here tonight. Not seen a lot of playing time out of the big man yet, but my goodness. To say he's big is an understatement. He's huge. He is a size of a man. Uh, the edge will look to, for him to, you know, he, he was delayed getting here due to uh, some visa issues. So he's working his way into the team. My guess is he'll be getting more and more minutes as the season goes on. And uh, he'll be a tough cover for a lot of teams due to his size. Uh, it'll be up to the edge to work him into the roster and get him in. And there's the big man now being introduced on the floor for the hometown badge. You can tell he's excited to be here. Just gave the old mini basketball a throw. That one might land in Torbay somewhere. Another new pickup came in with a lot of fanfare and well deserved so. I thought this guy was an edge killer whenever the Windsor Express came into town last year. That's Maurice Jones Sr. Unbelievable point guard. I, I challenged anybody in the league. I don't know if there's anybody as quick as that young man. No, he's definitely got some speed and uh, he can pass the ball and he can shoot as well. He had 13 assists the other night. He's gonna be a, he's a major pickup for this team. I think his major asset is he's passing. He really plays a cagey veteran game. He knows every time he goes to the rim, he's looking for contact. He's looking to get to that line. If he's shooting well, and to me, that's a little bit of an if. If he's shooting well, I tell you what, this edge team is, I think they're tough to beat no matter what. But if Maurice Jones is shooting the ball well, boys, it could be lights out for a lot of teams coming into mile one this year. If you've been listening to Carl English at all in the off season, it's championship or bust this year. He's saying that the Edge are looking for a championship and he believes that they can win it. When you're as close as what they were last year, you certainly can say that. And Carl English done a lot of really good work for this team. You can hear the hometown crowd bringing them into the game, welcoming them to the floor. And make no bones about it, Carl's not trying to hide nothing. And there's nothing wrong with it. I like that. I like that statement he's coming out and making. I like the fact that he's saying, hey, we're here to win, and that's what we're in it for. You know, these guys talk in the media sometimes. They sort of uh, dance around the subjects a little bit. I, I respect the man. Sorry, he, you know, I'm here to win. That's it. 100%. Say it, don't spray it, hey. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little bit wet over here, but you know, it's okay. Folks, I want to remind you, we are live and interactive here in Edge Basketball webcasting. You can certainly reach out to me on Twitter, at SteviePowerNL is the Twitter handle. And if you want to get your comments or shout outs to anybody, we will certainly try to get them on the air for you. We see the Edge owner, Mr. Irwin Simon, one of the owners being introduced to the floor, along with the St. John's Mayor Danny Breen, Erwin Simon recently picking up a major junior hockey franchise in Cape Breton as well, so not hard to tell Mr. Simon likes sports. That's probably an understatement. Hopefully we'll get Mr. Simon on the air here talking to us at some point during the telecast, but certainly a big thanks to gentlemen like Mr. Erwin Simon and Rob Sabah for bringing the edge here to St. John's. So this one here tonight, Ryan, I, you know something coming into last year and the other night, the Edge's game against Windsor, early in the season, hard to tell how teams are going to stack up, but this Moncton team looks really good. Yeah, this Moncton team, uh, they're they are a good team. They they had a long you know, training camp. They did some work overseas. They went to China as a team. Um, 
the Edge had a very short training camp. A lot of guys missing, a lot of guys Ladies missing time. Carl hasn't played a game yet this year. This is going to be a very Thank tough, you. tough fight for the Edge tonight. I'm going to listen to Mr. Irwin Simon bring some greetings to the friends here. Hopefully, you can pick him up. turnout here tonight you and I talked a little bit off air about maybe around 5,000 here for this home opener and that's just a sight to see winter world's a great thing Ryan talked about Corey Allman got a little update here once 
Broadcasters reach out. We're sort of a fraternity. We've got Aaron Sanders and Windra. We've got Scott Squires and Moncton. Scott's letting us know Almond rolled his ankle in the game of the week. So that's why we're not seeing him here tonight. So, final word before we tip off. Go Edge. Go Edge. Now, we're, we're not going yeah, to be no, we're supposed to be up here, up right? Yeah. Well, you sort of are, I guess. So, you know, hey, let's well call it as we see it. That's one thing I'll always do. Edge, good, bad, or ugly. You'll hear what I think, no matter what. Tip off, ready to go. Peter Patter, let's get at her here at mile one. Edge and the Magic here in the first game of the season. Reach out to me on Twitter, at Steve Power NL. And we hope you enjoy the action. Tip off goes to the edge, and Maurice Jones is going to take over for St. John's. Here's Jones. Jones, top of the key for English. English catch and shoot first basket. And that one was smooth as butter going through the hoop on that one. You knew he was going to shoot that coming right out. 100%. Carl English is not going to catch that one around the arc and lay it off. No, there's no chance. That is going up. Does it always go in? We don't know. But on a night, you never know with Mr. English. He could heat up quickly. Moncton, answer back quickly is Billy White, a little mid-range jumper, and he puts it through. And that's a tough shot. That's good defense. Tough shot for White, but he makes it fall. Here's Jones. Jones now up top. They're going to set the offense. Here's something we saw a little... I call it scrambly play early on, and you mentioned earlier too, Ryan, the lack of maybe preparedness, or not preparedness, that's the wrong word, uh, being together early in the year, not having enough practice time yet. We assume things will tighten up as the play goes on. Yeah, once these guys get together more and more and they play more and more, uh, they'll get to know each other and you know, we see a lot more ball fluidity and a lot more, they'll know where the other guy is gonna be. Billy White just put a great move there on Guillaume Bocard. Bocard a known for his defense last year. In fact, last year, I can remember, Bucard and English had some battles on the floor. Got to think that's one of the reasons why Carl wanted to bring him in. For sure. And he's got good pedigree. He's from the Carleton University under Coach Smart. He knows how to play. Wide open shot from the outside for three. That one doesn't get to go as Keith Wright Jr. just picked up a couple of points for the edge. Here's Des Lee. Desmond Lee. Steps around a screen outside. He's going to kick it over for Jones. Jones into Wright Jr. Wright Jr. Posting up there on Nick Evans. Wright's backing up Evans. We got a foul away from the ball. And no surprise there. Someone's banging English in the key down low. That foul will go against Wayne McCullough for the first. Yeah, McCullough's all over English here. He doesn't want him to get hot early on. Sort of can't blame the young man there. That's his job when you're on defense. And that's nothing Carl's not used to either. There's... I tell you what, this is my last year watching basketball was my initiation. I've got a newfound respect for how tough these guys are. This is not for the faint of heart, this NBLC. No, and basketball gets a hard go sometimes because a lot of people think there's very little contact oh in basketball, goodness. but it's the complete opposite. Absolute Wright Jr. couldn't follow up on that Jones miss. We've got another foul, this one away from the ball. This one's going to go against Des Lee as he was doing some battling down there with Doug Herring Jr. 5-4 here early on. St. John's and Moncton, the Moncton Magic. This is gonna be a tight contest tonight. We talked about this is two quality teams on the floor here at mile one. They got two teams here who, you know, they've made the right moves in the off season and they're, lo they're looking for big things to happen this year. Going to the old Twitter box, reaching out to Sammy. Sammy, click on the St. John's Edge website and click on the schedule. When the schedule come up, you should see a live link for the game right there. You will find it on that website. Ooh. Carl, Carl takes a hard hit there. Carl is going to take a lot of hard hits here. And Carl is a wily veteran too, Ryan. Sometimes the hits aren't quite as hard as what they appear. Well, there's no point getting older if you don't get wiser, Steve. Absolutely. Non-shooting situation, Edge will inbound. 14 on the shot clock as that resets. Ball kicked outside now. Desley will put it into the hands of Jones. Jones marked up top by Jahai Carson. Oh, Carson caused a little trouble there. Ball turned over and the Moncton Magics do indeed pick it up. That was Nick Evans. Evans out for Carson. Carson drives the lane. He goes in with the right hand, lays it off the glass and in. And the Moncton Magic grab there. First lead of this one, 6-5. Here's Bucard for St. John's. Guillaume Bucard 
Ball to the floor. Wright Jr. trying to find some space inside. Bucard is denied there by Nick Evans. Evans with a couple of nice defensive plays here for the Moncton Magic. Yeah, he's all over the ball. He's not, he's not playing his man very much. He's playing the passing lanes and he's looking for steals. Here's Evans. Evans fadeaway jumper, can't get that one to drop. Bucard will grab the rebound for the edge. Bucard waiting for some numbers to come down the floor to help. Bucard finds English on the outside. English guarded tightly there by Doug Herring Jr. English steps around the pick there. Caught iron on that shot, a little bit short. Three break down the basket there and Evans gets a nice easy layup there. It's not good transition defense there, Steve. Coach Plum letting them know about it. We see a couple of substitutions getting ready to come up and come in after that one. Here's English, English in for Wright Jr. Keith Wright Jr., big man trying to work down the lane. Little Mamie Cur baby Kareem hook there. And there you go, that's his game. That's what he wants to do. He wants to use that size. He wants to get inside. He uses length to finish over top of guys. Herring in for Billy White. White to the baseline. White and Bucard banging hard down low. That foul will get called on Guillaume Bucard. Edge with a couple of substitutions getting ready to come into the game here. And the edge will indeed go to their bench first. They got two guys coming in here. Now. Got Todd Brown Jr. checking into the game. And Tottenham Singh. Speaking of shooting, Todd Brown Jr., here's a new flash. That man can shoot. Yeah, he lit it up the other night. Oh, Mo Jones. He's getting bullied inside here a little bit by... I thought that ball might have went through the hoop there. He was hanging on the rim quite some time. And this has been a bit of an Achilles somewhat last year. and We saw it a little bit already. The inside game for the edge. And no doubt that's why they got Satnam Singh on the floor. But we can't be dependent on Maurice Jones battling on the boards there. No, you're not going to get many rebounds out of Mo Jones. He tries really hard, but he's heavily outside. Mo Jones. Mo Jones, I don't know if that's a, is that what you call him, Mo, Maurice? I like Maurice better. I, I'm going to stick with Maurice. You can go with Mo. But I tell you what, he might not be the biggest man inside, but I don't, I would not want to owe that man money. He is tenacious. <laughs> Absolute battler. I've, no one's going to work harder than that young man. We're number 12 for the edge. We've got a three point lead here now for the Magic. Moncton up by three. Des Lee with the ball in his hand. Sotnam Singh coming to the outside. That's a pretty good pick to set there. You're going to walk about four feet just to walk around the big man. Yeah, it's a big screen. Here's Jones. Jones, shot clock down to three. Jones in a little trouble in the paint. And there's a classic Maurice Jones fadeaway, drawn the contact, and he'll get a trip to the foul line. Checking in on the Twitter box. An old favorite, Mike Mahoney. Watching for the edge, and I love the one-liners this guy got. Hoping for a magic night for St. John's Edge. Not so much for Moncton. Big game tonight indeed. A little play on words there. And you, oh, you'll get it from Mike all year round. He's a fan favorite on my Twitter box indeed. 7.03 left to go. Moncton Magic 10, St. John 7, Maurice Jones Sr. to the line for two. That was a good move by Jones. Wiley veteran move as a little guy. I guess the big guys want to block you. So. I guess the edge are pretty confident in his foul shooting. Nobody up in the box yep. for a rebound. I don't know if I've seen that everybody yeah. back to four. And he goes two for two, so. They certainly know something for sure, indeed. They know something we don't, apparently. Sotnam Singh was pretty much stood underneath the edge basket while Maurice Jones was shooting foul shots. I'm sure you're checking out Maurice's foul shooting. He shoots 85% from the line, so. Going with the odds, nothing yeah. wrong with it. Play the percentages. There you go. And the edge have gone zone here now, trying to keep the uh, magic out of the paint. Mid-range jumper there from Moncton's Herring Jr. Doug Herring Jr. will not miss it. He's given that one too often. No, that one was too easy there. Here comes the edge. They move the ball around quite well to St. John's. Trying to find a set, and they find the big man down low. Stop them seeing. Trying to rev up the crowd a little with that mid-range jump shot. And a hard screen set on Dez there. Dez Lee Slow just to get up. back there. Ball has gone out of bounds, waiting for the whistle from the official. And Doug Salerno, Joe Salerno, sorry, pretty much almost just walked down to the edge bench, trying to get the referee's attention on that one. 
Inbounded, Moncton. Here come the Magic. Harrison, he's going to take a jump shot. That one draws the front of the iron. Not going to fall there. 12 11. St. John's trying to take the lead back. Here come the edge. Wide open look for three. Can't get it to fall, though. Off the hands of Diego Kaplan. And that's a good shot, though. Good screen, wide open look. You're going to want him to shoot that throughout the year. Kaplan couldn't get that one. Jones, quick rebound off the basket. Is Brown Jr. outside for Kaplan. Junior Cadogan in the game now. Cadogan puts the ball to the hand of Todd Brown Jr. Brown Jr. outside, shot clock under 10. Brown Jr. in a little trouble here off the dribble, can't get it through, and he is stripped by Herring Jr. And here's a fast breaks bucket for the Magic. And that is just defense to offense. A coach can't draw it any better than that. And the Edge are having a hard time here on offense. The Magic are pressuring the ball a lot, and they're having a hard time getting into their sets. Here come the edge. A little mid-range shot there by Jared Nickens, and that one will fall. His first bucket of the game for St. John's. White, next up on Brown Jr., up for Carson. Carson moves the ball over for Evans. Carson with a stutter step in the outside, back for Evans into the corner now. Outside for Evans, he's wide open. He'll get an open look at three, but that one's gonna draw iron and rebounded by St. John's. Here's Nickens. Nickens will bring the ball up the floor. Now it's going to put the ball into the hands of Junior Cadogan. Cadogan. Outside, Cadogan puts it down. Wide open in the corner for three, and that one will be made all day long by Todd Brown, Jr. He won't miss that very much. Shooting 47%. 47% from three-point land? Yeah, <laughs> that's not bad. Not bad at all. Good defense there by St. John's. Brown Jr. picks it up in transition, finds Cadogan. Cadogan wide open. Probably could have took a step in and shot that one. Took a little too much real estate on that shot. Ball draws iron and away come the Magic. Carson over Evans. Evans goes down hard in the paint, and that's going to be a travel call. Salerno not too happy with that one. We'll see Munkins for a substitution in the game. As Zeke Marshall's going to check in. St. John's certainly gone to the bench a lot more than the Magic here early on. And Ryan, that's something we see traditionally here at home. I don't know if it's teams traveling or weary, but they really depend on their starters a lot more than the home team. What are your thoughts on that? Or am I out to lunch? Which is very, very popular. Normally it's the opposite way around. The traveling team depends heavily on their bench because of the traveling, the exhaustion from traveling. Um, but, you know, the Edge made a lot of moves here in the offseason. They looked to strengthen their bench because that was an issue for them last year. Uh, so it's good to see them, you know, using all the guys that they brought in. My buddy Scotty Squire is checking in with me again on Twitter, letting us know that it's Billy White's first action since he rolled his ankle in the first half of the Moncton Magic's first game. So, gotta watch out for the old ankle rolls there in Moncton. A lot of rolled ankles going around here. Carl had a rolled ankle, Billy White. Perhaps a few purchases of athletic tape could be in order. I'm sure the trainer has them in bunches. 16-14, 3.56 left to go in this opening quarter. Not much flow, would I say, to this one. It started off pretty good. Uh, certainly got a little bit of, to use a Steve Power turn, mucky. They were mucking it out a little bit for a while. I know half the people listening will have no idea what I said there. But that's okay. That's all right. It's been a little bit choppy here in the go choppy, first. That's better. Yeah, we'll go a little choppy. going off, but... Uh, both teams will ease into the game here now. You know, a lot of that has to do with nerves. There's a lot of fans here tonight. Home opener, a lot of hype around the game. The guys will ease into it now, and hopefully we'll get a bit of a flow going on both sides. A lot of hype there. Is the majority owner, the owner of the edge here, Mr. Irwin Simon, I should say majority of him and Mr. Rob Sabah, owners of the team. Irwin trying to pump the team up before the game. Might have made him a little nervous. He certainly put the pressure on. But these guys are here to play indeed. We talked about it well before the game, and we see a nice pass inside for Keith Wright Jr. And so far, Keith Wright Jr. looks to be that big man, St. John's. I won't say it was missing last year, but certainly consistent play from. I like to play Keith Wright Jr. early on. 
Yeah, Keith Wright will be a big part of this team going forward. And, you know, he's coming from the Ivy League, Harvard University. He's got a degree in psychology. He's a smart guy. He's going to be able to pick up a lot of things here very quickly. Nickens into the hands of Brown. Out for Kaplan. Kaplan puts the ball to four. Kaplan got his pocket pick there, though. Ball turned over again. Good hands there by Junior Cadogan. Out for Kaplan. Kaplan under the basket. Almost turned it over, though. But that ball is just tipped out of bounds by Zeke Marshall. Ball will stay in the hands of St. John's. Fresh shot clock going up. 22 seconds. Reset here. 3.04 left to go. St. John's edge with a two point lead over the Moncton Magic. Des, go ahead. Yeah, and Coach Plum is making a lot of substitutions here in the uh, first quarter. And that's a sure sign of a team that hasn't played a lot together. He's trying to find some lineups that work for him and what guys play together well. Cadogan for Wright Jr. Wright Jr. a little off balance with that shot. Ball gets chipped out of bounds. It's gonna go against the edge. Moncton will get the call. They wish he had he could get that one back. Yeah, that was a pretty easy gimme there. A little bit off balance. I don't know if he was expecting the pass to come to him. He was pretty yeah. uh, wide open for the shot, but he elected the pass. Here's White now. White in the hands of Gary Jr. Doug Gary Jr. out directing traffic up top in for Billy White. White steps back, jumps one over. Keith Wright Jr., but Des Lee, the yeah, leaping here. lizard Carlos himself. St. John's once again a little disjointed on the offensive set there, and they turn it over so unnecessarily. The John's number 12, Jones and that's all good. Not growing pains, but getting to know each other, getting, getting on the floor together a little more. You can sort of see it. Yeah, it's very early in the season. A lot of these guys haven't played together yet. This is Carl's first game. So it's going to be an adjustment playing together. Moncton Magic, Carson now with the ball. Carson puts it to the floor. He's up top, guarded by Maurice Jones. Carson steps around the pick. Pretty day like they're going to kick it down to the corner. For Kate, Kate back outside for Harry Jr. Harry Jr. just beats the shot clock. Moncton a little bit quick off the step there as Isaiah Tate grabs the rebound, and Moncton will get another free shot here. And that's something that kills coaches. Doug Plum is going to be furious about that. They play great defense. They make Moncton, you know, force Moncton into a tough shot, and then they give up the offensive rebound. Wide open look for Billy White. He couldn't get it to go to Maurice Jones comes away with the rebound for St. John's. Here's Jones, drives the paint, kicks it outside for Desmond Lee. Lee, the ball up top. No doubt they are looking to set up Carol English here, but Carol very tightly guarded on the outside. There's a long pass there by Jones. Almost thrown away in Moncton. Very, very sharp here. You gotta say, I know right now the score clock showing an 18-16 lead for St. John's. But I, I don't know. I think Moncton might have a little bit more of a jump under step, Brian. Yeah, they got a they've got the jump on the edge here. And you know, the edge are playing very passive, they're playing very predictable. They need to move the ball more and look to play as a team. There's Billy White driving down the paint, nothing there. Good rebound attempt there on the inside by Moncton, but they can't get it to come away. It'll be edge ball with a minute 16 left to go in this opening quarter. Point scoring after slowing down substantially. Looked like we might be on our way to a 125 all game in the first couple of minutes, but things have slowed down considerably. Des Lee at top of the key. We've got an illegal screen set away from the bat, from the ball. And that foul will go, I believe, against Carl English of the edge. I think it's going against Keith right there on the ball screen. Good call. That's why you're the color guy and I'm just a dummy with the mic. <laughs> One minute left. Premium put on scoring right now. Both teams coming up empty in their last couple of trips down the floor. Yeah, both teams are exerting a lot of effort here on defense, making sure that neither team can get their offense really going here. Here comes Carson. Into the key, can't get that one to fall, and eventually does. St. John's will come back. Tie game up here, last minute of this first quarter. Great job there by Moncton Gentry Thomas. Right Jr. for English. English looking to catch and shoot there, can't get free. Now he's free in the outside. Kicks on the corner for Desley. Shot clock under 10. Dion Bucard got a hand in his face there. Draws a little short on that one. Ball rolls up on top of the net. That's a good call there by the official. He's out of bounds. Blowing that one down. 24 seconds left there in this 
first quarter. Teams knotted up at 18. Moncton. Not much of a difference in the shot with Lamecock. Fairly negligible. Aaron Jr. will hold it on. Aaron Jr. now waiting for some help to come out. Billy White puts some offense in motion. Aaron Jr. still with the ball. That was a cheeky move there. That couldn't get it move. to fall, though. That was a great move by Herring Jr. Just couldn't get the fall. Maurice Jones from the outside from half court. Can't get that one to drop. So the first quarter ends just like we began. Just a couple extra numbers on the board, all tied up at 18. Your thoughts, Ryan? Let's talk with the edge in their first quarter. Yeah, it was a slow start for both teams. Uh, edge is struggling offensively, that's for sure. They're having a hard time getting into their sets. Uh, the Magic are playing really good defense so far. Uh, I look for Doug Plum to make some adjustments here after the first quarter, and uh, you know the edge to come out strong. So, my buddy Scott Squires tell us to have a look for Isaiah Tate from Moncton. He is a three-point threat lead right now. Moncton Magic looks really good. They're playing a great road game here. They're making things difficult for the edge to get their offense going and. Frankly, Moncton has looked like beasts on the board to the offensive end. Yeah, the edge are getting pounded on the inside right now when it comes to offensive rebounding. Moncton is getting multiple chances, and uh, that's really hurting the edge. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. St. John's and Moncton all tied up at 18. Here live from Mile One Center, you're watching St. John's Edge Basketball. Second quarter just about to get underway here. Both teams tied up at 18. Pretty even on the shot clock. Timeout's the same. St. John's committing one more foul than the Magic here early on. Ball kicked the outside for Tate. Tate for loss. He's dribbled there. He's got to move it over. Picked up by Carson for Moncton. Carson outside to Evans. Evans wide open. Not the greatest shot selection there, but the shot clock was working against him. Desmond, I like the jump, Lee. Des Lee is one of the best leapers in this league. Remember an old wrestler leaping Lanny Poffo. If we're gonna do a wrestling analogy, that would be who Des Lee is like. Here's Jones Jr. outside for Lee. Lee from three, can't get it to drop though. Still rebounded by Tate. Tate pushes the pace down the floor. And Moncton with their second fast break point that we've seen. We haven't seen St. John's get an easy bucket like that just yet. Bukar for Lee. Lee outside for English. English double teamed almost immediately. Bucard trying to bring the ball into the paint. Kicks it out for Lee. Lee can't do it. Moncton just really applying the pressure on defense. Yeah, the edge are lost offensively here right now. They can't get anything going right now. Mike Mahoney, you're just too cute. St. John's Edge clicking on all cylinders and wins are great team win. All hands on deck, great dig of things to come. My goodness, boy, you must, you're worse than me. You must stick it over that home. I love it. Awesome. Good stuff. Des Lee with the steal. Lee, he's going to drive down Main Street, comes in off the basket, but the foul occurs before he lays it up, so it will not be a shooting foul. I don't know about that one, Steve. And we got the anti-referees union started early here to year. <laughs> That's a tough call either way. Well, I'll give the referees credit on that one. No doubt. Ball comes out now into the hands of Lee. Lee out for Jones. 
Jones got some separation. Jones guarded by a much bigger man up top there. And it looks to be Denzel Taylor. English from way outside there. English couldn't get that one to drop. Tate will pick up the rebound, bring it down the floor for Moncton. Tate for three, can't get the drop as well. Seems like it's been forever since someone scored some points here. Yeah, it's been a long time here. It's been a huge drought for both teams. Carl English gets a little separation, and Carl throwing up the air ball there, couldn't quite get it through. Yeah, and Carl's forcing things here right now. He's taking a lot of shots, a lot of contested shots. Uh, he needs to, you know, work himself in. He's This is his first game of the year. And that's the adrenaline, the hometown hero trying to get it going. I get it, I get it, I do. But you know who else gets it? Coach Doug Plum. He just pulled Carl from the game and he recognized that. He just needs to refocus and get going. Here's a nice pass to the inside. Evans gets another easy basket. Moncton getting too many easy baskets here right now. The edge seemed to have to work really hard for everyone to get. Jones Jr. Kicks one outside, and that's going to be another turnover for St. John's. There's more turnovers here tonight than the Pillsbury Doughboy. Unfortunately for the edge, they've got to really work on that one. 22-18, the score. Neither team wanting to run away with it just yet. Carson. Down the floor, Carson puts it down. Carson guarded by Jones. Carson trying to find a little daylight in the paint. Carson with a great move to the rim. Rebound there, finally. Jones Jr. manages to kick it up. Jones Jr. looked like he threatened three for one second. Going to kick it back outside to Lee. Lee over for Jones. Jones, there's a big pick there. And foul call against Satnam Singh there on the screen. And uh, the Boo Bird starting to come out on that one. Carson went hard to the floor. The big man, they said he was a little bit late setting the pick. That's the only thing I can assume what he called. But yeah, it's a tough, tough call, but he probably didn't have his feet set by the looks of it. His so feet were not set. So Translation, by, probably the right call. Probably the right call, but not the call the fans want I hate saying see. the referees are right. I really do. It sort of hurts me on the inside. I probably feel pain. And I, obviously, we got you laughing here. We don't have a camera on us, guys. I, I am joking. The, this is nothing but respect for the job the officials do. And indeed, that was the right call. I know Satnam didn't think so, but it was. Here's Tate out for Carson. Carson over for Tate. Tate to the outside. He stepped out of bounds as he took that ball and another turnover. I think we've played three minutes here this half, and I think there's only been four points scored. Yeah, there's been a lot of turnovers so far. Clearly, both teams are having a hard time, you know, getting things going here, but. Jones Jr., he will be the floor general this year for the edge indeed. Jones Jr. always likes driving down the paint. He does it so effectively for little guy. I don't know how he finds that separation. Just the pure, utter, greasy speed. Yeah, he's got some you know, unreal quickness, and he knows how to use his body in order to create contact and you know get calls from the referees. Ball kicked out for Nickens. Now Nickens puts it to the hands of Jones Jr. Out for Kaplan. Kaplan comes around the screen. He's got the open look for three. And Diego Kaplan on the board here for the first points of the second quarter for the edge. And the edge have gone zone here again now, trying to disrupt the Magic's offense. Billy White. White's going to take that medium range jumper. Can't get it to go. And the only bad thing about zone is the edge will do a better job on the board. No blue jerseys in by the basket there. We've got a foul away from the ball. That's a good call by the official. Again, my goodness, that's some kind of record here. Me saying good call by the official. Game one of the season. Well done, Stripes. Just let me break that one down here. Yeah, you might need to mark that one. 22-21 here for the Moncton Magic. Tight one here at mile one. Opening night for the St. John's Edge this season. And we're ready to go. Cadogan. The ball the outside. Kaplan got his pocket pick there. Carson not letting him get off any more three pointers. Yeah, hi, Carson. All over him. And Moncton turn it over again. It's almost starting to become a little laughable here. To, neither team really wants to set anything up and settle things down. More turnovers than a bakery, Steve. Ah, uh, the Pillsbury Doughboy is a better one. <laughs> Maybe because I look like the Pillsbury Doughboy. You wouldn't believe the people that poke me in the belly and do that. Cadogan. 
Rangers. He puts the ball to the floor now. Here's Kadugan. Kadugan to the outside for Nickens. Nickens wide open. Look for three. He'll get that one to drop. Nice pick there around the big man, Keith Wright Jr. by Jared Nickens. And that's the way the edge are going to look to play. They want to find that catch and shoot around the pick. Yeah, they want to set good screens and they want to get a lot of three pointers up this year. They've got a lot of good shooters and they're going to look to use them. They're also going to look to improve the rebounding there as we just see Gentry Thomas own the glass for Moncton. This is the downside of playing a small lineup. There's, a, you know, again, a hard time rebounding. Edge can't put one down. Away come Moncton. Herring Jr. kicks it to a wide open Thomas in the corner and he'll knock that one down for three. Gentry Thomas doing it at both ends of the floor for Moncton and they open up the three point lead. Cadogan, Junior Cadogan, gonna bring the ball up the floor for St. John. Puts it into the hands of Keith Wright Jr. Wright Jr. looking for Kaplan to come around down low. Instead gonna put it into the hands as he comes out up top to get it. Here's Kaplan, Kaplan trying to get away from Billy White there. Kaplan spins it back down for Wright Jr. Wright Jr.'s rejected out of nowhere there. Big, big rejection there from Denzel Taylor. He just came out of nowhere there. Yeah, and Brown and Nickens are gonna be mad at right here because they're wide open on the opposite side. He swings that around. That's a wide open shot for both of those guys. Scott Squires checking in. We let me know Billy White and Kawhi Leonard of the Raptors went to school together at San Diego State and they're still buddies to this point today. So there's an interesting fun fact. I really love Twitter. Twitter can just let you know things in the world. The only is there's no fact checking, hey? So you gotta be careful what you repeat. But if it's coming from Scott Squires, I believe it. I can guarantee you that. One of the best in the biz indeed, the Moncton Magic. Play-by-play -play man and voice of the Magic. 6.14 left to go here in the Ooh. second quarter. Three-point ball game in favor of Moncton. What was that ooh about? Uh, it looked like it was going to be edge ball there, but the referee decided to go the other way with it. And that's, they are the boss. They have the whistles. We see Coach Plum out talking to the official now. Not going to change his mind, Coach. No. TV timeout here, 6-14 left to go. Three-point ball game, Moncton, 27, St. John's, 24. The old kiss cam entertaining the fans here at mile one tonight. And they hope the edge are gonna come back and start entertaining a little bit more than they have been so far. So far it's been Moncton's night indeed. And we see Gentry Thomas again hitting another big three-point shot from the corner. That's two for him. Kadugan up the floor. Junior Kadugan off the dribble and attacking the paint. Puts one to the corner for Nickens. Nickens couldn't get that one to fall. Rebounded by Moncton. Cadogan going to foul Billy White in the backcourt. That's a good foul. Right? Yeah, that's a good foul by Cadogan. Moncton had numbers going the other way, and we're guaranteed a layup. That is a shore basket going the other way. He's still got a foul to give here. Uh, yeah, I'm okay with that one. In and he did do it. That would be called a flagrant. Yeah, exactly. It was a good foul. And, you know, the Eds are playing well here right now, but it's only a six-point game. 
Oh, absolutely. It ebbs and flows this game of basketball is indeed. Carol English back into the game for St. John's. Thomas trying to find that sweet spot in the corner there. Gentry Thomas. He comes off the rim and the putback basket is Denzel Taylor up there. And the board's just, I don't know if the stats are going to show up, but right now it just appears that the boards are just being owned by Moncton. They most definitely are. Uh, defensively and offensively, Moncton is dominating on the rebounding. Des Lee on the outside. Right Jr. for the screen. In for Lee. Lee trying to get it back to him, but Ashley threw that one away. Going to be Edge's ball, though. Des Lee, great work there. He turned it over, but he worked like a dog to get it back. Indeed. Coach Salerno trying to figure out how that could possibly be Edge's ball. And the referees are talking to over here. It might not be Edge's ball yet. Yep, they're having a chat. Normally, they say it's because it's Edge's ball. Uh, maybe, I think they're talking about the shot clock here. Yeah, they're resetting the shot clock to 14 seconds. It has to reset it because out of bounds. Oh, here's English. English. Picks up coming in. English has his pocket pick, and away comes Billy White of the Magic. White coming down Main Street. He gets upended, and he's going to go to the foul line to shoot a couple. Haven't seen that many people at the foul line so far. No, it's been, uh, you know, there hasn't been many fouls called, really. There's only three fouls for the edge and two for Moncton. And we're, you know, over halfway through the quarter. That's something we're not accustomed to seeing. The edge, a really good shooting team. Most teams came in here to mile one, and I don't know if you say they tried to rough them out, but they rough them up, but they played an aggressive style of defense. You're seeing that here tonight. Moncton is holding, they're grabbing, whatever they can get away with, they're, they're looking to do it because the edge are looking to shoot a lot of a lot of three-pointers, sorry, and uh, you know they're trying to take that away. Full marks to the Monk of Magic. I think they're doing it. It's a tactic they use, and they're doing it well because they're not crossing that line. They're not getting called for fouls. They're already getting away with some short air, but hey, boys, it's basketball. That's the game. That's what happens. You know, the edge can do the same thing right back. You know, you, there's a level that the referees will let you get away with. You gotta find that level and then play within it. Moncton enjoying their largest lead of the game up by eight here, and they've got Billy White going to the foul line to try to extend the lead to double digits. And Carl's not happy here. Carl thought he got fouled on that last turnover down here, and he's having words with the referee. So, Big crowd here looking to get into this one. Uh, not a whole lot yet. They've nice Carl English, three early going, but other than that, the Moncton Magic certainly taking the life out of this mile one crowd here this evening. But as we all well know, I don't know if that's a phrase, all well know, this edge team can certainly turn around very, very quickly here at mile one. Billy White to the charity stripe. He steps up and he makes the first. Looking like the pro he is indeed. White can't come up with number two, but you can really see Moncton are going after the boards. Yeah, and the edge are have, having to work for every rebound that they're getting. Every rebound is contested, and every rebound is having to be fought for. Cadogan out top, going to kick one into the corner. That's Bucard. Rebound grabbed by Cadogan underneath, though. And St. John's get on the offensive blast there and put one through. And that's what the edge need. Cadogan got into the paint there, moved the defense, kick out, and a three-pointer missed. But because the defense was moving and we're out of position, there was the edge were in position for rebounds. Gentry Thomas takes a long three-point shot. That was might have been a little ill-advised. Easy rebound for St. John's. Cadogan into the corner. English. Partially blocked. Partially blocked on that one is right, but Taylor caught the ball out of bounds. He'll turn it right back over to St. John's. And a fresh shot clock because he caught the ball. So. Absolutely. Des Lee is going to check out of the game. We'll see Todd Brown Jr. come back in. Referees having another little chat here. Not quite sure. That seemed to be a pretty easy 
one there. I think they're talking about maybe a foul beforehand. I think they're talking about the shot clock again, whether or not it should have been reset or not. So no, they are not resetting the clock. They are gonna leave it at 17 seconds where it was. English inbounds for Kadugan. Kadugan trying to find a little daylight in the lane. Kadugan looking for some contact there, throws it up. And we've got a foul away from the ball once again. I think that one's gonna go against Carl English. No, it's against Keith Wright for an over the back on the rebound. I absolutely love it when I'm wrong, because I'm wrong a lot. That's what, that's what I'm here for. Absolutely. That's why you get the big bucks. 4.05 left to go, 33-26. The St. John's Edge trailing the visiting Moncton Magic here. Home opening night here at mile one. Big crowd on hand indeed. And we got a blocking foul there. That one's going to go against Bucard. Thomas had a little step on him. Bucard had the right idea, just couldn't get the feet planted at the time. Yeah, and that's a tough call there. Edge with five team fouls. And we talk about how Moncton are slowing the edge down. They've only committed two team fouls. Very, very smart game here. Rebound for Bucard. Moncton coming up empty their last couple of possessions, giving St. John's a little bit of daylight here. Kadugan's gonna try to set some offense. Kadugan up top, finds Bucard in the corner. Bucard and Moncton really good reaching behind. They're just stripping the ball away from the edge. The edge think they've got a step on the defense, but they're just reaching from behind and grabbing it. Yeah, Moncton's got a lot of players here with uh, you know, a lot long wingspan, a lot of length, and they're using it. Speaking of, Junior Cadugan says, I've, anything you can do, I can do better. Cadugan with the screen, they leave it back in for Todd Brown Jr. in the corner. And Todd Brown starting to find a little lakey-lakey spot here at mile one. Yeah, he's almost automatic when he catches the ball. That's his second one from that exact spot on the floor. English takes the charge off McCullough. McCullough bumped English, and English landed about five feet away there, and that is a wily veteran move indeed. And the Oscar goes to... I don't know about an Oscar. He certainly did bump him, but he certainly didn't hit him that hard. No, most definitely not. So St. John's clawing their way back now, only down by four here, 33-29. 2.57 left to go in this opening half of St. John's Edge basketball, the visiting Moncton Magic in town for their first visit to St. John's this season. St. John's looking to give the Magic their first loss on the year. Here's Jones Jr., long three point from outside. A little too much real estate for him to try to cover at that time. And Tate will come away with it. Tate finds Carson. Carson high off the glass, can't get it. Rebound grabbed by Guillaume Bucard. Got Cadogan driving the lane. Cadogan hits the contact and the foul. And that's a nice little play by Cadogan. Not quite sure what the Moncton defender was thinking there. Once you're in the air, big fella, if you're gonna contact, it's gonna be a foul. You can tell it was almost like, I don't wanna hit you. I don't wanna hit you. But he was in midair. He tried to get out of the way at the last second, it's, but. You can't get out of the way when you're in midair, unless you're like a airplane with a control throttle. If, the human being is in midair, you can't control. Maybe, well, maybe somebody can control gravity, but they're certainly not playing in the MBLC. <laughs> maybe David Copperfield might get out of the way. Anyway, I digress, which I do a lot. 33 31 here. St. John's down by nine at one point, have come all the way back, and they're down only by one right now as Cadogan completes the N1. Billy White. Carrying the ball off the floor for Moncton. Draining this guy, White can't do. Outside for Herring Jr. Herring Jr. trying to draw some contact on Bruce Perry. Gonna move it over for Tate. Tate, shot. Tate can't get it to fall. All of a sudden, it's Moncton that have come up cold. Nice defensive play there by Doug Herring Jr. though. Tate catches, shoots. White is underneath the basket. Can't get it to drop though. And we got a foul from behind there on Jahai Carson. He will foul, and St. John's got a little bit momentum on their side now. Got a little bit lucky there after that turnover. Yeah, luck counts sometimes. You gotta be lucky to win sometimes. So, so St. John's trying to get back into the lead here. 
had a little bit of a nappy poo for some point, but they've come back and played very well here. Have your hometown edge out for English. English got the man in the air. He goes up for the shot. And that's another what we'll call a KG veteran move. That's a guy who's played a lot of basketball there. Absolutely. Had the guy in the air, saw the opportunity, and he's going to the line. I tell you what, it doesn't matter if you're 14 or 84, shooting from the charity stripe, you don't have to work that hard. There's no one guarding it in, so. Absolutely. Not quite sure what the argument would be. It was clearly foul. He was in the air committed to him. I mean, hey, that's the way it goes. Yeah, the Moncton Magic are a bit upset because Carl leans forward trying to draw that foul. Oftentimes, you, you don't get that call. But, you know, Carl being who he is and having that veteran presence, he's going to get that call every time. I got no problem with that call. I think it's a good one. And you can call me Homer, Jay Simpson, all you like. But I see that half, that call happens. It's a 50-50 one. It, you know, that's the way it goes. Same as the block charge. Absolutely. English came up empty on his second shot, almost got his own rebound there. St. John's once again, nobody up for the, uh, on offense. Maybe it's early in the air, maybe you don't want to run back down the floor on defense, save some energy, I'm not sure. I've never seen this before. They're almost giving up knowing that they're not going to get the rebound, so they're just bringing guys back to their set on defense. Billy White under the basket, and he is a monster down low. Got a buzzer on the floor, not quite sure if it's a timeout or substitution. Look to be the referees. And that one is gonna remain a mystery to us why the buzzer went, but I don't see any, no timeout, no substitution. So we'll just go back and start all over again. 35, 33, buck 16. Left to go in this opening half. St. John's and Moncton in Dare I say it, a low scoring defensive NBLC game. This league known for its offense, Ryan. I, I don't know if last year we saw a game this hard. We see Junior Cadogan just took a hard smack the head, and Cadogan is down, folks. Training staff for the edge out to the floor quickly, and Cadogan's had a history with some injury issues, and he just took a very, very hard knock there. He's in some discomfort on the floor. That's not good to see, folks. No, and Carl English is very concerned here, so that that, that, can, that says something right there. I believe we might have some blood. Yeah, I think he took a hard poke to the eye, and he might be bleeding a little bit here. Training staff out quickly to Junior, tending to him, so we'll have, obviously, we'll have a timeout here, so 101 left to go. Not quite sure if the edge are uh, getting the foul call on that one or not, Ryan. Don't see the officials for talking about it, but I certainly didn't see any call on the floor. Minute one left, they've done a pretty good job clawing back into it. It looked like Moncton started to open up a little, but St. John's threw some good defense of their own. And listen, we talk about Moncton's defense. Aside from St. John's having some issues on the glass, their defense has been very, very good here. 35-33 in the NBLC is not a high scoring game at all. I mean, this is a very tightly contested affair. Yeah, and the Edge are playing really good defense right now. They're keeping everything for Moncton on the inside. They're limiting their three-point chances and making them work for every possession. So their defense is certainly keeping them in it right now. This is a tough blow for Cadogan because he was playing really well. He was. He was a nice little spark for St. John's. Had some nice penetration to the score. Captain Carl over here, wiping up the floor himself. A little bit of everything, that Carl. Yeah, that's what you call dedicated to the program. Coach Joe Salerno taking the opportunity. He's got an impromptu timeout on the floor here. He's actually got the board out drawn up a play on the floor. A little new look here this year. Too, Ryan, for anybody watched our broadcast last year, the benches have actually switched sides. The benches last year were on uh, the side of the floor that the Bob Cole Media Center is in. This year, it's on the other side, which makes sense. The dressing room's right behind the benches. Yeah, it makes complete Players sense. Players don't have to walk across the floor. They got a quick out, especially for the visiting teams. They don't need to be hanging around the uh, home team fans a whole lot after games. And it makes it a little, little bit easier for us. We can see what, what is happening on the benches, and that's helpful for us. Still 
surprised here. We can sit some staff down there in suits. Everybody wiping up the floor except for the kids that wipe up the floor. The kids are dry mops to do it, but they're not using those. Anyway, I digress once again. 101 left to play in this opening half. And funny thing about this game, Ryan, it's been tightly contested. There's not much space. We come into the second half, this thing could be like a WWE Ric Flair. This could be busted wide open. You never know. Yeah, it's highly possible. Shot at the buzzer. Bucard fighting for the rebound. Can't quite get to it. Good effort there by Guillaume Bucard. Just couldn't get, get there as his foot was out of bounds. Carson will take it for Moncton. Here's Carson. Puts into the hands of Doug Herring Jr. He'll walk it up the floor. Herring Jr. Gets an outside for Carson. Carson in the hands of Billy White. White matched up by Keith Wright Jr. White looking to challenge the big man. White down low. Gets one up. Can't get it to follow. Guillaume Bucard. If there's one edge player doing a great job on the boards, it would be Guillaume Bucard at this point. Jones. Out for Bucard. Back in the hands of Jones. Out for Maurice Jones. Todd Jones and Maurice Jones on the floor. Got to be careful with the Joneses. Try to keep up with them. 11 seconds left. You liked that one, didn't you? Yeah, that, that was a good one. You'll get, you'll get used to it, trust me. 35, 33, 11 seconds left to go here. Maurice Jones to the line. And we talk about the KG veteran move. There it is again, drawing the contact out at half court. No chance of scoring out there, but Jones makes a great play putting it in. Yeah, Carson a little bit over aggressive there. So I was going to be happy about that one. St. John's little substitution here. I believe Jared Nickens coming back in. And Moncton going to try to just squeak out a little extra time here. Ten seconds left to go. Tie game at 35. Moncton want to take the lead into the dressing room at the half. That one's turned over, though. Instead, Jones puts it up. Long shot from outside. Can't get it to drop. And the first half will end just like we started. Same as after the first quarter. It was 18 all. Almost the identical scoring in quarter number two. We'll go in with 35-35 after the first half of play. St. John's and Moncton stick with us. We'll be back for the call of the second half. Don't go away. All right, welcome back to Rogers TV, and thank you so much to uh, Steve and Ryan with the call there. We're all tied after two quarters of play. Uh, Bill Hart with Killian Roberts here. Uh, we're going to check out some highlights. We're going to talk to Doug Plum in just a little bit. Before we do, uh, we'll roll with these highlights, and we're going to start with, uh, well, the formula that won the edge a lot of games last yes. year. Carl English, you know, stepping up big time like he did last year again this year. I mean, this is quick off the top of the game here. Carl shooting from outside of the arc and draining that one right away to put the team up, which would you would think would give them the momentum going into the rest of the game to generate some more outside the arc, but not quite the case of what we saw here today, which is so far, I suppose, in this game. I guess we could yes. still see it in the second half. There's still lots of basketball left to play, too. Uh, looking further down, of course, uh, Junior Cadugan uh, in a play here that caught your eye. Oh, yeah, this was, uh, I found a big turning point of the game. I mean, going up for the two, but then drawing the foul as well. So essentially getting the full three points because he did make the free throw after. And this to me was just a turning point for energy on the team and going forward for the rest of the game of the quarter. And I mean, this was more under the three minute mark of the second half of the quarter, the second quarter here. So still a lot to come from the team. And I'm hoping that this they pull into the second half to generate some more energy. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, they're tied. Now, we both agreed that uh, the edge were outplayed by Moncton yeah. in the first half. And one of the reasons why the score is tied is because of plays like this where a lot of, a lot of this was happening. Yeah, and you know what, I said it before. The saying is you can't keep doing the same thing and expecting different results. Well, this is a prime example. This wasn't the first time we saw a similar play like this. This happened over and over and over between the first and second quarter and it's going to continue to play happen unless they start outletting on the outside of the arc rather mm -hmm. than trying to go to the inside well mm -hmm. maybe i'm way out of my league <laughs> in speaking to that but from what i can see i would you know start moving the ball around the ar That's arc right. 
Well, last year, as we mentioned earlier, uh, shooting from the three. One thing we did notice in this, uh, there's more three-point threats on this team than last year because there was a number of guys that have stepped up were sinking threes and showing power from outside the arc. So we'll have to see. Uh, we'll find out more in just a little bit. Now, we're going to talk to Doug Plum in just a few moments. Stick around because we have more to talk about here tonight on Rogers TV. Any job worth doing is worth doing using the right tools. It's so much easier on your back. So if you're going to be using your back, ask yourself, is there a tool for that? Focused on quality and convenience, there isn't much you won't find at Marie's Mini Mart. Homestyle breads, sandwiches, plus a variety of artisan breads and delicious single-serve desserts available exclusively at our Frecker Drive location. Marie's Mini Mart, with 25 locations wherever you go, there we are. Help me run. Help me go places. Help me swim. It's, it looks great. It, it really does. does. It does. I mean, it, it's just one big happy family in St. John's. <laughs> it's good to have hockey and basketball. Well, I mean, they, are, they do work together. I they mean, do. it's all one under, under one organization. And, mm -hmm. you know, I know a big thing this year was a lot of the basketball wanting to get out and see the hockey and talk sure. with the hockey. And I'm sure it'll be the same thing once the Growlers are back in town. But speaking of the edge and who was getting out, I know that head coach Doug Plum was at the Growlers home opener. And he did speak with uh, our co color commentator, Ryan Brockville, this morning about what to expect from the team this year. Hi, right, Coach. Thanks for speaking with us. Um, so this is your first season at the helm of the Edge. Yeah. What are your expectations for this season? Uh, my expectations are to get better every single day, and at the end of it, to be walking out of here with the championship ring. I think you know if you're a competitor, you, you don't just play to play; you play to win. So that's where all our attention is, is focused. And we took a good step the other day, but every day got to get a little bit better. So it was a good win the other day. Mm -hmm. um, Moving forward, what's your philosophy going to be for this team? Like, what are you looking to get out of these guys every day? Well, every day, I mean, we need to have a, a level of positive enthusiasm and a love of your job and a will to get better. Um, you can't win a championship in November, but you can lose one if you establish a losing culture. So every single day, um, we have guys that, that not only love to work, but they love to prepare. And that was kind of a big thing that we went after this year. So. Um, I mean, in terms of actual philosophy, I mean, you can see we're playing small. We want to play fast. We want to get up lots of threes. We want to get in the paint. We feel like our guard core is as good as anyone in the league. Um, and our bigs are coming along. So every day, a little bit better, a little bit better. So this is a completely new roster this year. How are you preparing? How are you getting these guys to gel and mesh as a team? Um, I mean, yeah, it's been a quick training camp. We, we had about two and a half weeks. and. It was tough because we didn't have an exhibition game, right? So that first game we played in London, we were still trying to figure out what's our best lineups, who plays well with who, what, where are the plus minuses, all that stuff. Um, but having said that, we do have a lot of veteran guys that have played a lot of basketball over the course of their careers. So the systems are not rocket science. They're based on spacing and making reads and intelligent basketball. And we have veteran guys that, that are capable of doing that. So, um, I mean, it's just a process, right? You got to some things you can only iron out through playing together, but we do have a pretty high uh, baseline just because of the type of guys that we have already. So, Sure. Um, you said that you have so many like veteran players. How heavily do you, as a new coach, do you lean on these veteran players? Um, I lean on them in terms of trusting them that they're prepared to play. I mean, uh, I don't lean on them at all for any sort of game plan or any sort of input. I think that that would be anarchy. Um, but yeah, I think the, the luxury you have with older players is number one, they know, they know their game um, and they know what it takes to be professional. So you don't have to worry about kind of coaching emotion as much as you would when you're coaching uh, young players. And for tonight, what's the, what's the game plan for tonight? What do you, you know, you want to get up and down, you want to shoot a lot of threes, but defensively, who do you have to stop? What are you trying to do? Uh, well, they got, a they got two really good guards, uh, Doug Herring Jr. 
Um, Doug was with me in London. He's one of the best point guards in the league if you let him do what he wants to do. Um, and then they got another guy named Jahi Carson. And Jahi is he's a professional scorer. He, um, he's a handful. He can go right and left. And he's a guy that you just got to make it tough on him. Um, their, their bigs are very good. I mean, top to bottom, they're probably the deepest team in the league right now. They actually went to China before the year and had a preseason tour. Um, so I think this is like game 10 for them. So it'll be a good test for us. I mean, I, I, I think we're in a good spot. Um, the other game was a, was a big step forward for us, but I'm looking forward to, uh, to the challenge tonight. We'll see what we got. Awesome. Good luck tonight and good luck with the season. Coach. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, well, he made a few points there. You see the philosophy is not lost from last year's uh, edge team. He did mention this is going to be a squad that shoots a lot of threes, and we did mention that a couple of players that we didn't expect to shoot from uh, yeah. the arc. We're doing that tonight. Yeah, pretty well everybody yeah. who got the ball on the edge was trying to shoot from the outside the arc and not quite working. Maybe going to look a bit more inside yeah. the paint in the second half here for sure. And it's also worth mentioning too that it takes a while for a team like this to gel because uh, unlike the other leagues, uh, there was no training camp, no exhibition games. So essentially they're playing their exhibition games but they count in the standings yeah they did have an interesting training camp and they wanted to do it similar to the european style where you leave town you get to know each other sure. build this chemistry and that's why they went to grand falls windsor but the only problem with doing that is where we also live in newfoundland on an island it's kind of hard to bring other teams in to play them they could have right. played mon i suppose but mm. again mon just getting into their season so kind of this awkward situation of having to play blue versus white and see what happens there and then mm. not having everybody there at camp either we know Satnam didn't come in till after Grand Falls Windsor, right. and Diego didn't as well. Mm -hmm. And then letting guys go as well, and Gabe Freeman, yep. and a few others now that we're seeing this roster truly really try to jive together. So this is the process that's that's underway right now. Now Doug is on uh, behind the bench tonight, and of course he was dealing with the suspension. So what have you yeah. been hearing about that? So the suspension is it's an interesting situation because what happened was it was tampering and so Doug interacted with a player on a restricted agents list like we would have had our nine players and he mm -hmm. did that during a time period where you're not allowed to and so now the league has issued him a two-game suspension but in the appeal process decided that he wouldn't get the first two right away so he did get to play or get, did get to play. He sure. did get to stand behind the bench for yeah. the first away game, but sat in the second one, and it'll be the same situation here this weekend where we see him behind the bench tonight, but we won't see him behind the bench on Sunday afternoon. All right. So, But he did say there's an advantage to it. He does get to kind of step away and see how the team is driving and unfolding, and hopefully he's picked up some tips, and yeah. we're going to see more of that in the the second half here, like I keep mentioning. But the interesting thing is, is Doug is 0-1 on the season, and mm -hmm. Steve is 1-0. So uh -huh. <laughs> I'm uh -huh. sure neither are, well, Steve's <laughs> probably pretty happy about that. Sure. Okay, stick around. We're getting ready for the second half soon. We're going to go back to mile one momentarily right here on Rogers TV. Any job worth doing is worth doing using the right tools. It's so much easier on your back. So if you're going to be using your back, ask yourself, is there a tool for that? Focused on quality and convenience, there isn't much you won't find at Marie's Mini Mart. Homestyle breads, sandwiches, plus a variety of artisan breads and delicious single-serve desserts available exclusively at our Frecker Drive location. Marie's Mini Mart, with 25 locations wherever you go, there we are. What really triggered it was uh, one of my friends uh, who took his own life. I started uh, self-medicating with alcohol. I couldn't sleep. I was having uh, constant nightmares, waking up screaming. Uh, a friend of mine referred me to the Legion. I had no idea what services they provided. But uh, that's what eventually forced me to seek the help, and I'm glad I did. It was the best thing that I ever did. Saw the growlers well, yeah. again. I mean, we well, they, a, they we, are playing tonight, aren't they? They're on the road. Oh, no, that was last night. They're in Orlando. Yes, yeah. sunny Orlando, compared to here where it's just snowing like crazy outside. Yeah, I bet, but. You, I bet you they wish they were here. <laughs> I would be. I'd want to be here to watch this edge game between Moncton. I mean, tied up going into the second half. You, yeah. you really can't ask mo for much more in terms no. of being from the fans, but you would kind of want to see a bit more offense from the edge. Right. Uh, you, you said it perfectly. Uh, Moncton, of course, uh, St. John's lucky to be tied uh, going into the half because we both agree that Moncton really outplayed uh, the St. John's edge. Uh, they wanted the rebounds more. They were handling, they were catching the passes more. They were intercepting more. Everything, in a, in a nutshell, 
was done a little more to perfection on Moncton's side than for the uh, yeah. edge. Yeah, and I think a big part of that was Moncton stepping up and catching the edge's mistakes. Yes. You know, really capitalizing on those opportunities. And we've mentioned it before in terms of the turnovers. Mm -hmm. And a big part of that was Moncton knowing where to be and yeah. stepping in. So you can't, I mean, impressed that the edge have kept it together and it's a tied game, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if the play continued the same way that Moncton just ran away with this. I'm really hoping they don't, but no. I mean, it's very much a possibility. Well, this is a strong team and there is lots of basketball left to play. So uh, I'm sure uh, Coach Plum has been talking to the boys and I kind of gave him a little <laughs> finger wagon or two and said, okay, look, this is what we're doing wrong and this is what we're doing right. Let's do more of the right, less of the wrong. Uh, this is the only game on the NBL schedule for tonight, so uh, they're going to be back again. Moncton's going to be back here again, of course, on Sunday. Doing and, that uh, traveling where you stay for two because it just mm -hmm. makes much more sense oh, in yeah. terms of coming all the way to Newfoundland, which, I mean, I would love to come all the way to well, Newfoundland yeah. from anywhere, but well, it makes sense. You know, there's a lot of players that have never been to this part of the world, so it's, it's really Majority beneficial. of our own roster. Yeah, I, I, Yes, <laughs> exactly. This is going to be a great chance uh, just to look around, check out Signal Hill and some of the sites. Uh, hopefully they bought some long underwear because, <laughs> boy, they're going to need them. Okay, yeah. We're getting set now to turn things over back to uh, Steve Power and Ryan Brockerville as we get set for the second half between the St. John's Edge and the Moncton Magic at Mile One on Rogers TV. half is in the books here both teams knotted up at 35 Steve Power here with Ryan Brockerville Ryan uh, the, for me in my games watching the edge last year I can say with unequivocally this has been the best defensive effort I've ever seen from the edge and the other team like 35 35 after the first half is almost unheard of in the NBLC yeah, the NBL is not known for its defense, that's for sure. And uh, the first half was a defensive battle for sure, but I think a lot of that has to do with, you know, both teams are out of sync offensively. A lot of teams, are, both teams sorry, are missing shots. Um, I expect to see a completely different game here in the second half. Yeah, and, and this is the beauty of this league. Like, we're so tight defensively, and the edges work ethic on defense has been out outstanding. This could be blown wide open in the second half. These teams could put up 70 points each, no problem. Yeah, we, um, we get a few guys on both sides, a few three-pointers, this game could be completely different. One of those things for the edge, I, I, I think, uh, Ryan, is my humble opinion, I think they've got to match the intensity they've got on defense, the work ethic on defense, that, that work, that intensity. Sometimes you don't need to work that hard offensively if you're skilled shooters or skilled players. They've got to bring that work ethic up a notch on offense, I think. Yeah, for sure. And they definitely need to 
move the ball a bit more. They're trying to play through just a couple guys. They need to play through the entire team, set good screens, get some ball movement, and they'll get some open looks. Wright Jr. looking for Maurice Jones. Back to right, nice ball movement there to a wide open Carl English on the side. English couldn't get that one to drop though. Nice hand in the face by McCullough there at the last minute. But that's, some, that's a pretty good look for the edge on the first set. Yeah, and that's a good shot and that's good ball movement. And you know, that's what you're looking for as a team. McCullough, he gets a turn to do it from the outside and he'll knock it down. And the Moncton Magic will grab the early lead here in this second half. English on the outside. English guarded by McCullough. McCullough's drawn the assignment most of the night when Carroll's been on the floor. He's done a good job so far. Des Lee, wide open look there. And Desmond Lee will knock that down for a tray. Back down the floor come the Magic. McCullough outside for White. White, big man, can handle the ball very well there from the outside. Certainly not afraid. Here's White having a look. McCullough got English to bite a little bit on that. Good open look for Herring Jr. from the outside, and Moncton with great movement on the offensive set there, Ryan. Interesting to see that there's a lot more open shots here in the second half as opposed to the first. And it's one of those things you, you can't let the intensity on defense go down to sacrifice it for offense. Sometimes it's easy to do. Jones Jr. Maurice Jones from the outside can't get that one to fall, and that'll be turned over to the Magic. We got more points in this first minute and a half than we had in the first five minutes of the last quarter. Moncton back up the floor, Carson. Carson puts it in for White. Wide open look again for Herring Jr. And he'll knock it down again from the same spot. Yeah, and there's a missed off defensive assignment there. He had two guys on one man. They found the open guy and he knocked it down. Doug Herring Jr. I gotta think one's one of his favorite places to play. That young man certainly plays well when he's in this building. Here's English. English puts the ball to the floor. English trying to get a step around White. English gonna kick it outside for Lee. Des Lee couldn't get it to fall. Lee got a good look there. Nice pass by English, just couldn't get it to drop. Back come down the Magic. Evans driving to the basket. He's got the ball stripped, but there was a little tug on the arm there, and that'll send Evans to the line for two. Yeah, and a quick sub there by uh, Doug Plum. Looking to get Brown in. Lee's been getting these open looks. Putting, putting in the better shooter, Brown. Hoping that he'll be able to knock these shots down that Dez is missing. There you go, Dez one for two there from three point land in that one. And Todd Brown, yeah, with that time and space, you gotta think that's a pretty good equation for the St. John's edge. Evans coming up empty, striking iron on that first foul shot. And meant to, when I went down in between the locker room and the half, I should have grabbed one of the coaches, find out what the foul shooting defense was all about. Not putting anybody in the line. We'll check on that one later on. St. John's with possession now. Send to their offensive set out for English. English moves it off for Bucard. Bucard looking to put the ball back into the hands of English. English will step through White. English trying to force it through. Wright Jr. got it. Couldn't pick it up though. And ball goes out of bounds. Taken over by Moncton. St. John's a little bit sleepy coming back on defense there. Unfortunately for Moncton, Evans couldn't handle it cleanly. Yeah, and Evans is more of a shooter. He's not looking to score inside. Out for English. English catches, shoots, and English knocks it down there. And Billy White putting his hand up right away, saying, yep, my bad, coach. Yeah, it's a good shot for Carl in rhythm, in transition. That's the shots he wants to hit. Absolutely. Carl will make those all night long. And Billy White knows that, and he's a key player, and he's probably not going to let that happen again. Speaking of Billy White, here's a wide open little flush there. Uncontested, he goes to the basket and lays in another couple. Maurice Jones trying to drive through the lane. Jones picks up the dribble there, knocks it out for Bucard, outside for Jones Jr. Todd Jones Jr. Outside, so we've got Jones Sr., Jones Jr. on the floor. And Guillaume Bucard is going to put it down. And the lid's been lifted off both baskets here. A lot more scoring here in the second half. We got some contact in the key then. Carson coming through. That foul is going to go against Maurice Jones Sr. And indeed, indeed, both teams got the old offensive markers out in the dressing room in between periods. 
Yeah, a lot more open looks here. Uh, you know, defense is slacking a little bit here, but you know that's that's going to happen towards the end of the game. But, uh, you know, not to say I'm starting to think I'm becoming a basketball guy here, but I said it. This is what we're liable to see in this league. It's it's the way it goes. Teams like scoring, and you know something else. Fans like scoring too. You can tell the energy in the building a little bit up high. It might be the navigators in between halftime playing for the crowd here. But the, uh, there is a little energy in the building. And right now, Moncton not phased by that at all as they are shooting the lights out here. English is matched up by McCullough. English trying to step around, puts one in for Singh. Singh couldn't hold on to that one. And the big man coming down the floor. Here's numbers, and Evans goes from the yeah. University of Phi Slamma Jamma there. Yeah, quick timeout from Doug Plum here. He's not liking what he's seeing. And Moncton with authority open up a seven point lead once again, 742 left to go in this third quarter. Moncton Magic in the lead. So Coach Doug Plum gonna have a little quick chat with the troops there. Moncton enjoy a seven point lead here in the early stages of this third quarter. 51-44. And you gotta think Coach Plum reminding the boys, hey, uh, we wanna score some more points, but we can't forget about defense at all. Jaron Skeet into the game for St. John's. There's a nice pass into the basket for the big man Singh. And Singh gets fouled by Billy White. Billy White looking to the sky saying, what am I doing getting in the way of that freight train coming through? And that's a good call by Doug Plum coming out of the timeout. It's clearly a set play. Designed to get Singh an easy look at the basket. Try to get him into the game here. I like getting Jaron Skeet in here. I think that gives us you know the hometown crowd here. Love Jaron Skeet. Only three returning players from St. John Edge too, Ryan. I never talked about that in the pregame. Jaron Skeet. Des Lee and Carl English. Uh, so the hometown fans got to learn to love these guys again. And they will. I, I know they will they deal with those. We see Satnam Singh got a little bit of hometown English on that foul shot. Looking around for someone to give him a high five. Doug, Todd, Todd Jones finally came out and gave him one. Singh with number two. The big man trying the awkward bounce, bounce, bounce into the hoop. Doesn't get there. And he'll hit one or two from the line, 51-45 in favor of the Moncton Magic here in the third quarter. It's interesting to see that the edge when Satin Singh is in the game, they're playing a lot of zone defense. Clearly he's not the most mobile guy. Yeah, so the, the big guy's not going to move a whole lot playing zone. They'll just stick him in the middle. And yeah. you say one thing for him, he, he's imposing in the middle of the floor. Oh, he's There's a big no guy. No doubt about that. Diego Kaplan. Kaplan. Trying to fight off the foul. That's some good body movement there by Kaplan protecting the ball there. Coach Salerno thought he was going to have a steal. They've got the foul instead. Another good call by the official. And that certainly has got to be a record of me seeing good call by the official. Got to be. We'll put another mark down in this paper. 53-45. Got a foul away from the ball. Not quite sure what that'd be. Offensively, it looks like it's going to get sat and sing for an illegal screen. And Coach Plum not too happy about that one indeed. Singh picking up his third foul of the game. And that's gonna bring Wright Jr. Seems right now Coach Plum is 
His bigs on the inside seem to just rotate between Wright Jr. and Singh. Other than that, they've got a little bit of a smaller shooting lineup on the floor. Carson, nice kick went out high for Herring Jr. Doug Herring, going on for Evans. Evans in that key. Evans has been in the key for about 14 seconds. Haven't seen any whistle on that. Maybe you're allowed to stay there in that league that long. Kaplan under some pressure from Carson right away. Diego Kaplan does a good job bringing it up the floor. Got some separation now. Good defense there by Carson. In the hands of Todd Jones. Jones up top. Jones looking to move it. Picks up the dribble a little early. Puts it in the hands of Jaron. Skeet. Got a step. Skeet drives the lane. Nice basket there by Jaron Skeet. Skeet. Trying to make an impact coming off the bench here for the edge. That's a good take there. He saw he had the mismatch with the bigger player on him. Took it hard to the basket and made, this, made, the, made the bucket. Todd Jones Jr., good body position on that rebound. He's going to take it down the floor himself. Jones on the outside. Jones, now he's going to drive the lane. Jones Jr. on defense, on offense, getting it done. For the edge, Todd Jones Jr. in the edge. Crawl back to within six. Doug Herring, gonna stop and slow things down. Up for McCullough. McCullough, got a step on Wright Jr. there. That's a nice quick movement to the basket for McCullough. And yeah, McCullough's really turned things on here in the second half. He's, he's much more aggressive. Skeet into the hands of, I believe that's Nickens. Nickens checked in out for Kaplan. Kaplan over to Skeet. And John's certainly gone with a, a little bit of a smaller lineup here. Nice pick up top. Skeet trying to get through to Evans. Great Skeet, pass. nice pass there for Jones Jr. Jones just ran out of room underneath the basket. But that is a sweet feed there by Jaron Skeet. And you can see why Skeet was a crowd favorite last year. Skeet with a little bit of instant energy coming off the bench here for St. John's. St. John's have some work to do though on the defensive side of the ball as Moncton have just shot the lights out here to start this third quarter. And the edge still only sending one player in for these free throws. At least there's one there this time. Yeah, really. Last, last uh, half, we never saw any. I don't know what the strategy is here, but it's gotta be something. Little homework for us to do in between games. We'll find out. Then again, if I'm a coach, I'd never tell you that. Never, never, never. No, no, no. Jones makes good from the foul line. Harrison will bring the ball back down the floor for Moncton. And for Evans. Evans, he's got a medium range jump shot. He'll say, thank you very much. I'll take that one. And that's too easy right there. You got to get a hand up. St. John's Kaplan. A good call by the ref here. There's Taylor was all over. Yep. Taylor was all over Jones Jr. there. That's a call there when we've got the fourth foul of this third quarter picked up by Moncton Magic. Funny, more fouls, more points. There's hardly any fouls early and no one was scoring. Still not a whole lot of people going to the line, but a lot more action away from the ball. Nickens puts the ball to the hands of Diego Kaplan. Kaplan, down low for Wright Jr., out for Jones Jr., low for Kaplan. Kaplan takes a shot from way outside there. And that's a real long way to shoot. Had a fair bit of time left on the shot clock, too. Not quite sure why you'd rush that one, but it does go up. Yeah, Coach Moncton, won't be happy with that shot selection. Moncton pressing here on the inbound. Ball gets put in the hands of Skeet. Skeet gingerly takes it up over the half. Here's Skeet. Skeet, little stutter step to the inside, puts it to the corner for Jones Jr. That's another nice pass there by Skeet. Jaron Skeet, he's impressed me coming in. I know he's been not getting a lot of minutes early on, but I'll tell you what, this looks pretty good in this young man here right now, especially his ball movement. Yeah, he keeps playing like this, he's gonna be getting a lot more minutes. Ball gonna be inbound by Skeet. Skeet looking for Kaplan on the go around. Ball's kicked out of bounds here by Gentry Thomas. That'll reset the clock back to 14 seconds as it was only at 10. Maurice Jones Jr. coming into the game for Diego Kaplan. 
St. John's into their offensive set. Nice pass underneath the basket by Jared Skeet. That one was easy. Jared Dickens. Yeah, Evans got turned around there. He didn't have any idea where Dickens went. Here come the Magic. Both teams shooting fairly well. Don't need to shoot well when you got a wide open layup to the basket there as Carson had on that play. Ball goes in for an easy one for Moncton. Desley's not happy there. He's, he's complaining that Carson's holding his arm off while he's going to the basket. Skeet up top. Skeet, long three-pointer for Skeet. Can't get it to go. Lee trying to find a rebound. Don't come away with it. Here come the Magic. And there's a foul called against Jones Jr.'s hearing was indeed upended. 318 left to go, 10 point ball game in favor of the visiting Moncton Magic. Steve Power joined by Ryan Brockerville, St. John's Edge basketball. First game of the season here at Mile One Center. Big, big crowd on hand, looking for the edge to crawl their way back into this one again. They were down by nine at one point early on, and he did come back to tie it up. But Moncton really coming out strong here in the second half. Taylor into the hands of Carson. Nice pass from Carson back to Taylor. Taylor on the putback got fouled by Lee and Taylor will go to the line to shoot two. Yeah, Moncton's made some good adjustments here in the second half. They're getting a lot of open looks. A lot of that has to do with the edges defense. It's really slacked First off ball, here. The they need to pick it up. It's like a tale of two cities here. The, the defense on both teams was just simply outstanding in that first half. Uh, right now, Moncton seemingly scoring at will. So St. John's will no doubt have the turn. We don't see Junior Cadugan down on the bench either, Ryan. Uh, we saw Cadugan take a nasty, I don't know if it was an elbow, but it was certainly a nasty bang. Uh, he was cut. So Cadugan not on the, not even on the bench right now, unless you see him, I can't see him down there. No, it looks like he'll be out for the rest of the game. So reportedly has two cuts under his eyes. So let's hope it's only just a cut and there's no concussion issue or anything like that. Hopefully. We wish him well. Hopefully he gets back quickly. Maurice Jones. Let's take the ball up the floor. Puts it in the hands of Bucard. Bucard. Trying to get a look around. Bucard needs to move the ball. Puts it into the hands of English. English. With Gentry Thomas all over him. English back for Bucard. Bucard comes down the lane. Drives through. Can't get it to fall though. And once again, underneath the basket, the defense of Moncton is just stifling. Ball kicked out for Carson. Carson up top. Carson got away from a little screen here by Evans. Evans practically threw a hip check in Bucard then. Here's Evans backing him off. He's gonna have a little walkie-talkie there. The official calls the travel against Evans. Where do you come up with these things? I told you, I'm not well. <laughs> I, I was a special child, so let's leave it at that. Listen, folks, if you can't have fun with it, I won't do it. And I, it's my goal to have fun and entertain you guys at home and bring you this great St. John's Edge basketball action. We've got a good one going here now, mile one. St. John's in the hole by 11 right now. There's an, another the turnover. Foul against Nickens for a push off. And the St. John's fans not having a whole pile to cheer about right now. Moncton, I think they're playing a classic road game. They're just stifling on defense. And frankly, they are really outworking the edge right now. Yeah, they're, they're, they're you know, the game plan to a T here. They're taking the crowd out of it. They're playing well, they're playing tough on D. They're making it hard for the edge. And as a road team, that's exactly what you want to do. Moncton into her offensive set. Now here's Gentry Thomas. Thomas up top trying to get around Lee. Good defense there by Des Lee. Ooh, but a foul. foul called on the play. And I don't know if Des could have done any better on that one. No one's happy about that one. Substitution coming back into the game. Keith Wright Jr. going to check in for St. John's. Jared Nickens will have to see. Gentry going to go to the line. Sorry, Gentry Thomas is going to go to the line for the Moncton Magic. If you're going to foul anybody, Thomas would be the guy. He's, not, he's not the best free throw. Put a few Lego bricks up there like that one. We don't mind at all. There's a foul away from the ball. Thomas is going to take that foul as he 
harass Maurice Jones Sr. going into the line. And as a coach, that, that's something that you hate. That far away from the basket, Jones is just bringing the ball up. That'll, that'll hurt the team later. Inbounds into the hands of Jones, puts it over for English. English, nice speed there for Wright Jr. Wright Jr. up to Daisy. Good pass, good roll, good finish. Nice feed there by English and a real nice little finger roll, as you say, by Wright. Herring Jr. Up for Thomas now. Thomas on the side. He's going to kick it up top for White. White feigns a shot. Going to move it aside. Shot clock down to five now. Herring Jr. is going to have to do something with it for Moncton. Outside for Tate. Tate, as the buzzer goes, knocks it down for three. Big three point shot there by Tate. And at he was the looking buzzer. For a foul there. He was looking for a foul. I'm looking for a Big Mac, and that ain't going to happen right now. So play goes on. Let's continue. Buck 12 left to go here in this third quarter. And right now, I dare to say it's been all magic. Kick to the outside, Tate, wide open look for three, and he'll Healing knock it, yeah. that down all day long. And Tate's shooting 68% from three on the season. Not here's a guy you want to leave open. Here's a wide open look there, and a rare defensive miscue by the Magic, as Wright Jr. got an easy bucket underneath. But right now, it's a case of Moncton trading three threes for twos with St. John's. Tate, up top, Tate's gonna move it up for Herring. Herring. Trying to step around the screen, gonna hold it on. Herring, matched up on Bucard. Herring up and off the glass. Got the rebound was Moncton though, it fell right into the hands of Taylor. Final shot of this third quarter, gonna go to the edge, about a one second difference in the game and shot clock right now. Jones Sr., Maurice Jones on the outside. Here's Jones, Jones trying to make some magic happen. Jones got a wide open, look for three. Nice pick thrown there by Wright Jr. And Maurice Jones with a sweet stroke on the outside. Long shot from halftime and that'll do it. Big, big quarter put in the books there by the Moncton Magic, Ryan. Yeah, Moncton played really well there in the third quarter. Limiting at the edge on one end and scoring at will on the other. So, third quarter in the books, it's Moncton 73, St. John 60. Stick with us, we'll be back for the call of the fourth. Well, what can you say <laughs> about that? Well, there, there's a lot to say about that. Mm -hmm. There's a lot going on here that I, we kind of anticipated, but in many yeah. ways, you know, really hoped wasn't going to happen. In terms of scoring, I mean, more points in this third quarter than in right. the entire first half. How crazy is that? It, it comes down to defense, then we didn't see a whole lot of it. No, many lapses uh, on the edge side, on the defensive side for the edge on the ball. Uh, some positive notes, though. It's good to see uh, Jared Skeet on yep. the floor. Uh, he made div he paid some dividends right away. Some great passes, some great defense. And I found Todd Brown Jr. as well uh, is a shining light also. Hitting a lot more threes, too. I mean, we're mm -hmm. not missing as many on the outside, but still not making yeah. as many but like you said I mean there are positives coming out of right. this third quarter here but one player we did note not back on the bench was Cadogan yes. sorry not Cadogan Cadogan check out this is this is what went down right here this so this happened in the first half of the game and has led to him not returning and that would be his own teammate Carl yes. English running into his face really yeah now, we heard that he has some cuts on his face, but we're thinking maybe he got it square on the nose, and anyone that's ever got Whoa. anything on the bridge of the nose knows it's, it's not a good feeling. Well, not at all. I mean, it's, it's not something you ever want to encounter, and especially by your own teammate here, you know. And after this play, clearly unsettled, and you, you almost thought he was going to fall down, like, mm. he, you know, it well, he had tried, been a no. bit harder contact yeah. to the head, but so far he hasn't returned to the bench, which has kind of hurt the edge. I mean, he yeah. generated a lot of energy and was putting mm -hmm. up points in the first half here. So now we're seeing other guys stepping up, though, right. in, in Jaron Skeet and sure. Todd Brown hitting those boards right now. So let's get back down to mile one and continue to play. We've got another quarter of action between the St. John's Edge and the Moncton Magic here on Rogers TV. All right, fourth quarter just about ready to get underway here. 
And let's hope the edge can put together a fourth like they did in that latter half of the second quarter because that third quarter was not exactly a Mona Lisa for sure. Although if you're a fan of the Moncton Magic, it was a pretty pitcher indeed. Moncton, Thomas with the ball, Thomas guarded by Jones. You can see the edge a little bit more urgency on defense here right away. Kate couldn't get the shot off and just as I say it, 24 second shot clock violation. St. John's more intense on defense in that position, Ryan. Yeah, definitely picked it up defensively. Looking to pressure the ball, forced a shot clock violation. It's good defense by the edge. Let's see what the offense brings now. Kaplan puts the balls in the hands of Jones Jr. Uh, Jones Jr., he's got a look. Can't get that one to fall. Rebound almost grabbed by Bucard. He was quick off the mark, just couldn't quite get there. Ball thrown down to the corner, into the paint now. And there's a nice basket there. Credit where credit's due. Tenzel Taylor doing a good job in the paint for the Moncton Magic. There's a shot by Jones. Ball in the way, takes the contact. Couldn't get it to drop, though, but Maurice Jones will indeed go to the line for two. First foul on Moncton, number zero, 11-0-1. Left to go on this one. 15-point lead, the biggest of the game for the Moncton Magic. Jones misses one. St. John's really, dare I say, struggling in a lot of aspects in this second half, even from the charity strike. It's to be expected from a team that hasn't really had a chance to play very much together yet. You, you probably got that right, Ryan, and there's one thing I know I'm right on. I've never seen a championship handed out in November, so Folks, stick with us here. This is a good squad that's assembled. It's going to be a great year at Mile One Center for sure. And hats off to the Moncton Magic. Right now, they look to be, dare I say it, the better team right now on the floor. They, full kudos to them. They are earning everything they're, they're getting. Yeah, they're playing well. They're playing together. They're moving the ball. A lot of good looks on offense. And a lot of that has to do with how well they're playing. Ball finds the hand of Thomas. Thomas a little bit of an acrobatic spot. Can't put it up. Bucard pushing the pace. Bucard trying to go toast to toast. And you can just see there's the effort defensively. Evans coming from behind trying to swat that away. But he did get the foul on the back. Evans not happy with the official. That's the way it goes. Satnam Singh. Big smile on his face down low as he bangs into someone. Hey, what? Remember to throw an old hockey analogy out. Remember Larry Robinson used to play with the Montreal Canadiens, and he was a big beast of a man. And everybody said, don't wake up Larry Robinson. That's the impression I'm getting out of Sotman and saying, as long as he's got a smile on his face and he's joking around with you, if I'm the opposing team, that's okay. I don't think I'd want to wake the big man up and get him. Yeah, and really. he, he just bullied Evans, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right in underneath the Absolutely. Net. So Satnam Singh could virtually own the paint, I got to think. Yeah, a bit of a gentle giant, I think. Here's Tate now. Tate up top. St. John's were going zone for a second. Switched it up last minute. Tate walks around a pick. He managed to come down to the lane. Tate's playing really well here in the second half. Absolutely. Jones in for Singh. Singh comes over, and the big man will stuff that one down for St. John's and that'll get a little rise out of the hometown crowd. Billy White comes through, left-handed layup and Moncton answering back right away. It's just tit for tat here at mile one right now. Jones kicks it out. Here's Bucard, Bucard into the paint for Singh. Singh, little medium range jump shot, can't get that one to fall. And Singh booting it back down the floor to big man, trying to come back hard. Carson kicks it outside for Thomas. Thomas for three. He got a wide open look. Couldn't get it to fall though. Ball's going to be picked up by Bucard. Coach Plum got to think he's probably going to be looking for a substitution there. Bucard got his pocket pick coming through the paint. Bucard trying to throw it outside. Couldn't get rid of it. Tate takes it. And that's a pretty good foul there by English as they had strength in numbers coming back the other way. Yeah, Bucard's had a rough game. He's playing really hard. He's working really hard on the offensive end, but he's struggling with his offense. Yeah, yeah. it's taken so much out of him. I look at Guillaume Bucard as that defensive player, that, that guy on the floor 
you want him on the other team's best player. He, he's really, really hard to play against. How much he's going to contribute offensively, you know, everybody pitches in, but to me, that's a bonus from Guillaume. But right now, tonight, the, the edge have gone cold here in this second half. Yeah, they're definitely struggling offensively. A lot of turnovers. I don't know the numbers right now, but I would imagine that the edge have many more turnovers than the Magic right now. And that's really been the story of the game. Maurice Jones down the floor for St. John's. He's gonna have another foul. Jones does what he does best, taking the ball into the paint and causing some chaos for St. John's. Stats online showing St. John's 16 turnovers, amongst them 13. I gotta think that stat might be a little bit kind to the hometown edge here right now. Jones Jr. Jones Sr. Sorry up top. Maurice Jones. I'll just stick with Maurice. Maurice trying to get around Thomas. Maurice coming through the paint. Does so once again. Jones draws the contact. And he slices and dices his way in there. Tough, tough man to stop indeed. And he's crafty, man. A lot of moves. A lot of shimmy. A lot of shake. Using his body well and drawing the foul. Maurice Jones Jr. has got more moves than Kellogg's got cornflakes by the looks of it in the key. He's struggling from the free throw line right now though. Eight, shooting 85% on the season, he's missed his last three. It's interesting there, neither team had anybody up to in the key on the free throw. I thought we were just gonna let Maurice throw it up. St. John's still with no one up there. And there's good reason on that free throw as Jones puts it down. Carson coming down the floor for Moncton. Inside, easy bucket there for Billy White. Billy White letting the edge know who's the boss underneath the rim. Billy White into it there. Using the side really well there. Maurice Jones in for Todd Jones. He loses the handle on that one. Ball goes out of bounds. And they're going to say it's still edge ball. Jones is in some discomfort yeah, under the basket. Yeah, he took another shot in the face. And right now the edge just getting bullied underneath the rim. Wondering if we'll see a sub come in. Jones up holding on his face there, but no movement from the St. John's bench. He's a tough guy. He'll walk it off here now and he'll be good to go. Oh! oh, oh you can take that one away, Ryan. Tell us about oh. it. And uh, Evans cheated up here, and Bucard just drove right by him and then threw it down. Guillaume Bucard says, well, I can show you a little offense, and there it is. Billy White comes back the other way, and Bucard on defense does it. White just wrapped up Nickens like Santa Claus on a Christmas present. I don't and know maybe what is, White is thinking here. That's a terrible foul to take. White is just frustrated. He got schooled on defense there, and... You know, maybe Coach Salerno needs to talk to his big man a little. You don't want to give the edge a reason to want to come back here and to get back into it. Moncton are in control right now, but St. John's, Guillaume Bucard trying to take this team on his back on both ends of the floor right now. Yeah, hopefully that dunk by Bucard will get the edge going here a little bit. Maurice Jones into the hands of English. English looking to come through. English manages to get it back. English in the hoop and up and under. In the hoop and up and under again is Carl English for two. He gave, uh, <laughs> gave a little stare down after he got that basket. Don't get any extra for staring, but good to see English get the move into the paint. There's a drive from Carson on the outside. Carson a la Maurice Jones here goes in and just throws his body with reckless abandon in the paint and he'll get the call. Yeah, Jones will be upset about that, about that one, but it goes both ways. Jones throws his body around, Absolutely. Carson throws his body around. Both get the benefit of the call. Carson to the line. Steps up and neither team shooting lights out from the foul line. Moncton 60%. No one practices free throws. They only the shoot only practice with three pointers. Well, you want to make them count when you got them though. And they come up empty on that trip to the charity stripe. Here's Todd Jones Jr. trying to get one. Guillaume Bocard grabs the rebound. Outside, St. John's 
take the saran wrap off that basket there. They just can't get it to fall. Well, that's Each unfortunate because that one was halfway down. Driving to the basket is Carson. Carson goes through. We got an offensive foul call there. No, it's a call to block. Thanks, Bo Jones. Oh, I, th I said offensive. I thought I meant to say defensive, believe it or not, folks. Jones not too happy about it. He just runs around the court like he's on a lapathon collecting pledge sheets. But I think that was a block. I'm with the referees again. Uh, I think Mo got a little bit unlucky there. I was looking for the so charge. That's your way. You, yeah, you can say you don't agree with me. That's fine. Because both people at home know that like, you're more right than me all the time. So that's okay. I wouldn't go that, I wouldn't go that far. Oh, but. I would. Especially if I'm picking up for the officials. Here's Billy White. Got some separation now. He's got to by Bucard. Bucard on White. White, he wants the challenge. Goes all the way through. Billy White with a nice drive down the lane there. And you got to give the big man credit. He was challenged and he accepted and went right through. Bucard. Bucard went for a little walk there. Might have got away with that one. Yeah, I think he got away with the travel there. Alfred Nickens. Nickens into the hands of English. Wide open in the corner. Todd Brown Jr. Todd Brown Jr. puts it up and down, and St. John's back to within 10. Need a couple of defensive stops, though, and try to get on a little run now as this edge team. Wright Jr. to his feet. He's getting ready to check back into the game. There's a turnover for St. John. Billy White thought they were going to go down low, but you can tell Billy White's refocused. Got to give Coach Salerno credit here. He's really drawn the big man in. It looked like White might be going off the rails for a little, but... He certainly refocused and got back into this one. Yeah, and Moncton's trying to play through White right now, thinking that they had the mismatch there with Bucard. So they're trying to post him up. Keith Wright Jr. back into the game now. Here's Maurice Jones. He's got a wide open look from outside for three. Maurice Jones Jr. gets the fans up here in mile one. St. John's back to within seven. The edge fans finally a little something to cheer about here. He's going to a couple three pointers to do. Here's Tate now. Tate on the outside, guarded by English. English stepping up on Tate. Tate comes down. Ball almost over half court. Shot clock to one. And St. John's with a good defensive set there. Almost with the steal, but they forced a bad shot for Moncton. And Carl wants this English. shot. To the top of the key, swings, can't come around. English can't believe there was no foul on that one. Herring Jr. to the outside. Both teams, you can just feel the intensity pick up here. White, White trying to get around the big man. White underneath, good defense there by Keith Wright Jr. For St. John's. Maurice Jones looking to come to the lane. Jones out for Todd Jones, in for Maurice Jones. Jones up, under for the layup, couldn't get it to fall though. Well, we got some contact there between Keith Wright Jr. and Billy White on the floor. And White, a little irate, screaming at Wright Jr. Referees coming over and getting involved. Coach Steve Marcus on the floor trying to straighten things away. And folks, the old expression is business is picking up. Last three minutes here, it has picked up indeed. Yeah, and the Edge are getting a lot of open looks here now. Starting to make some of these three-pointers. And that's really got the team going. It's got the crowd into it. And they're going to look to make a push here. I think the Edge are working for these open looks, too. There was something missing early. I, I don't know what it is. I'm going to go back to that Guillaume Bocard stuff. I think Bocard, not just the slam at one end, but the defensive stop on White the other end. That was maybe... This may be a turning point. Still lots of time to go here. And Moncton's still up by seven. 4.51 left to go. We're going to take a little break. We'll be right back.
All right, so the timeout over, 4.51 left to play. St. John's making a little bit of a move here, Ryan. Uh, Maurice Jones gonna go to the line. What's been the difference here? Why the sudden change of fortune for the edge? They picked up the tempo here. They're getting out in the transition. They're getting a lot more open looks. They're moving the ball. Everything is picked up for them. And a lot of that has come through their defense. They're getting stops and they're, they're getting out in transition. And they got guys at the foul line. They got guys in the lane. First time tonight we've seen the edge up in the lane. Maurice Jones hits two from the line. Bucard's gonna come back in the game and I'll go to him again. I really like Guillaume Bucard's game tonight. He's certainly not from lack of effort. No, he's done everything for the edge tonight. Whether it be defense, rebounding, he's been all over the place. And we got a little problem with the shot clock here, so they're gonna make the adjustments. Good catch by the referee. Not quite sure though why Billy White's a little animated down there. Well, he's been a little animated in the last couple of minutes. Ah, that's the way the young man plays. Gotta give it to him. Oh, of course. Love the passion. So, ball will be inbounded here at half court. Referee's pushing some advertisements out the way. You gotta like that. Taylor's gonna inbound it for Monkton. Got a foul by English behind. Little too aggressive trying to push over on Evans. McCullough. Sorry, McCullough. I got you back. Thank you, bud. Evan say Evan, Evans wouldn't, at it all Evans night. wouldn't be out that far anyway. Tate. Gonna inbound it this time. Ryan's herring out top. Herring. Emerson Gerrard by Bocard. Uh, Bocard thought he had the steal, but instead it's going to be a foul. And the Boo Birds are going to let the referees know about that one. See the replay up on the top, but you know something? He did get him a little. Got to call a spade a spade. We get the pleasure of looking at it in a replay on the clock, so referees have to do it in real time. They got it right again. That's the toughest job in the house. There's a nice spin by Tate. That's a tough shot in the key, and he gets it to drop just inside the foul line. Tate's using the size there. Jones clearly got a miss, uh, clearly disadvantaged with the height there, so Tate just shoots right over him. The voice of the magic, Scott Squires, called it earlier. Tate can shoot. Here's Bucard. Bucard matched up on White. Bucard, medium range jumper, not there. Come away with it. It's going to be turned over outside for English. Wide open look for three. Can't get it to drop. Jones Jr. underneath the basket. He can't get the foul. How is there not a foul there? Oh my goodness, Jones Jr. right under the basket. Yeah, and Carl's gonna pick up another foul here on Tate. That would probably be English's fourth, I gotta think. Yeah, he's coming out of the game here now. So both teams getting close to the bonus. Actually, they're in it right now for St. John's. Still a seven point ball game right now. Todd Jones Jr. right underneath the basket, up in the air, and I guess a big gust of wind must have blown and knocked him off balance, because it seemed like contact there, but. A lot of contact there, but he goes up a little bit stronger there. He probably gets that call, and he might actually make the basket as well. So there you go. Good analysis there, 3.55 left to go. Seven point ball game here at mile one. Once again, discussion by the officials at the scorer's table. Could be a little night one. Uh, hijinks got to get out, some kinks in the system. You never know. Yeah, they were having a bit of trouble with the shot clock uh, earlier before the game, so. You're going to love that. They've got Buddy the Puffin here on the screen, the uh, mascot for Newfoundland Growlers, and I guess he's the mascot for the St. John's Edge as well. Um, the Jeopardy music playing here in between. That's awesome. I don't know if you folks can hear it at home or not. Lots of discussion. I tell you what, Coach Salerno's got the benefit of about three extra timeouts here tonight. Yeah, every stoppage in play, he's getting his guys together and he's barking them orders. So, Tate is going to go to the foul line here for St. John's. Tate gets up and he'll sink that first one. Knocks it down. Moncton now 
Dr. Matilda leans too much, going to bring some guys back. They don't want any easy buckets on a fast break, indeed. And Tate's an 83% free throw shooter, so. Tate from the line, he'll make no mistake, and he hits both. St. John's now back to the offense. Maurice Jones carrying the ball up the floor. Jones, Diego Kaplan, Keith Wright Jr., Jared Nickens, and Todd Jones Jr. on the floor for St. John's. Outside, kicked out for Jones. Looked like Kaplan had a wide open layoff, but I guess that's why he threw it out there. Todd Jones Jr. for three. Three's worth more than two. Jones Jr., I tell you what, he's been a little bit sporadic at times here tonight, but he's got a smooth stroke. And his length really helps him on that stroke. He's able to shoot over a lot of guys. Great block. Big defensive play there by Keith Wright Jr., but Billy White sticks with it, and he knocks back the rebound. But that's a big block there by Wright Jr. Full marks to Billy White, staying with it. Maurice Jones in for Kaplan. Kaplan for three. St. John starting to heat up from behind the arc. And that draws the lead down to five. Just under three minutes left to go. St. John's need to stop here. Doug Herring Jr. Finds a little mismatch, and that's just too easy. Yeah, for Monk. Doug Plum is irate here on the sidelines. He's upset. That's something that they worked on in practice this morning, and something that they were trying to prevent. Here's Maurice Jones. Maurice Jones now on the outside. Jones trying to fake to the lane. Jones looking for a contact, kicks it out for Nickens. Nickens looking to get the third three of the game. Can't get it to drop. Substitution into the game. Nickens gonna come out. Carol English will come in. 2.23 left to go. 91-84 in favor of Moncton. And I gotta think, this is a must, must stop possession here for St. John's. Yeah, St. John's needs to stop here and they need to get out and get a bucket on the other end. Doug Herring Jr. not in any rush to get that ball up the floor. Some gamey clock management going on here by Moncton. Herring up top. Herring looking for some help, still comes down, guarded by Kaplan. Herring trying to post up Kaplan. Herring in the paint, Herring puts it up, Good tough defense. shot. Couldn't get it to fall, and great defense there by Diego Kaplan. English out for Maurice Jones. Maurice Jones underneath the basket. That one's gonna get kicked out of bounds by Moncton. 153 left to go, seven point ball game. St. John's no doubt gonna be looking for the three ball. Yeah, it's been, it's been what's really helped them in the second half. English out top for Kaplan. Kaplan, Maurice Jones coming around up top. Full shot clock to work with. English trying to find a little open space. English, the old head fake there. He's going to get sent to the line for St. John's. And if you're not going to knock three balls, not bad getting to the line and stopping that clock, Brian. No, and that's a good play by Carroll. He's been looking for that call all night. And hopefully he'll be able to knock down two here. English to the line for his first of two. Carroll steps up and he'll easily knock that one down. Gonna try to bring his team to within six. Sorry, five, if he can make this one. Yeah, I did grade, for, te I did grade 10 math about four times, by the way. Here's English now and five points indeed it is. 143 left to go. Need another stop and another score here. Doug Herring brings the ball down gingerly for Moncton. Into the hands of Denzel Taylor. Taylor is going to work it across for Thomas. For Herring. Herring. And for Tate. There's a big defensive block there by St. John. Maurice Jones comes away with the ball for Kaplan. Kaplan throws it away to English. English was screaming for it. Not quite sure English was that wide open there to make that pass, but that's the way it goes. No, that's a tough cross-court pass by Kaplan, but looking to find Carl for the hometown three-pointer. Yeah, the hometown three-point is not worth any more than someone else's three-point. That's one there. I got to call it like I see it. Carl's there, but he's not that wide open. That's not an automatic shot. Tough break for St. John's. They work so hard on defense to get the turnover. They do but then they give it right back, but that's the way it goes sometimes, 91-86. So, minute 18 left, Ryan. What's gotta happen here for the edge? The edge need to come out here now, have a good defensive possession here. Need to get a stop. Uh, 
and Linsforth, they don't need to score quickly, but they definitely need to get a bucket on the other end. Yeah, a stop and a score, and that's gonna set them up for success. I, I gotta think a, a Moncton score here, but he, uh, I won't say the fat lady's singing, but she's gonna be on stage warming up. Yeah, a score here would really hurt the edge. Um, anything other than a score would be great. <laughs> And then you want to get it into the hands of your best players. And hopefully they can make some plays. So. 91-86. St. John's. Moncton looking to definitely score but you got to think they don't want to score right away they want to eat a little clock here yeah they're going to try their best to milk this clock unless they get a really wide open look and then they might go for it st john's going to pressure the inbounds right away something we haven't seen just yet it's all about assignments now and you don't want to miss yours if you're the edge with 118 left to go Ball put in the hands of Tate. Tate, no one there. White comes back to help, and they do indeed get the ball in. Moncton Magic, they, they play like a team of veterans. They really don't get rattled here. Yeah, not by this big crowd, not by the momentum switch. They're pretty And, that, and that's the edge. benefit of having a good training camp, playing a lot of games together early on in the year. So St. John's get the stop as they get a miss off the Tate shot. They get the stop. Here's Jones. Jones into the basket. And Jones one. puts it up, and he'll get the call for the end one. And if you're a doctor, you just wrote a prescription for the St. John's Edge right now. That's exactly what the edge needed right there. Get Mo Jones going to the basket. Get a foul. Get to the line. Stop the clock. Perfect. So Jones with a chance to put this to a two-point basket. Jones gets the hometown roll there. 91-89. Two possession, two possession shot clock here. St. John's made in their own hands. The crowd's really into it here now. Here's Herring Jr. Herring Jr. guarded by Kaplan. Herring Jr. Waiting, willing to wait for that shot clock to go down before making his move. Herring Jr. got around Kaplan. Right there for some help, kicks it outside. Good shot clock management here by Moncton. There's going to be a foul up top by Jones, Maurice Jones, and he recognized probably had to give up that foul there. And that's a killer there for the edge. They get the stop, they do everything right defensively, and they give up another offensive rebound. They give Moncton another chance. And they foul Carson. Jai Carson going to the free throw line. 84%. Don't like those odds, but probably not the yeah. one you'd want to pick. We'll St. John's know. fans trying to put a little bit of will into this foul shot, and they certainly got a little bit of voodoo on that one. You might have jinxed them. Now they've got a chance. At most, it'll be a three-point lead here for Moncton. St. John's will get a look at tying this one up, indeed. You got to wonder if Doug Plum's going to call a timeout here, try to draw something up. Carson, second one from the line, he does do that, and yes, indeed, timeout called. 25 seconds left, three-point lead, Moncton Magic, St. John's, a wealth of players they can go through for this shot. Ryan, who are you looking for to take this shot? I'd be looking to get Brown a shot if, it, if you're looking for a three-pointer. Uh, anything other than that, Mo Jones has been phenomenal here in the second half, so you might want to play through him. But the Edge don't really need a three here right now. They get a quick two, get another, get a stop on the other end.
might be the longest time out in the history of timeouts. Yeah, it's been a long one. <laughs> There's no doubt, like, for such a thing as a hometown edge, maybe it's the old, uh, I know everything's a half an hour later in Newfoundland, but they're probably pushing a little here in this timeout. St. John's certainly with ample time to draw off this game plan. 25.6 left to go. St. John's will have Jones Jr. in ball, the ball. So we've got Jones, Maurice Jones, Kaplan. You might be seeing a uh, double screen here for Carl coming down here in the corner. I'd say you might be right. Jones Jr., Maurice Jones, inside to the big man right. Right. Not the guy you think you want the ball in his hand. Off from Maurice right Jones. There. Maurice Jones under some pressure for right. Uh -huh. That's stolen. Big steal there by Gentry Thomas of the Moncton Magic. And that is a big time defensive play there. Little surprise, ball worked through Wright Jr. He had that ball in his hands a lot there. Yeah, I don't know what they were trying to do there, but it didn't work, unfortunately. And that's the way it goes sometimes. Full credit to the Magic. Gentry Thomas with the steal. Looks like they were trying to put the ball in the Mo Moe's hands and let him go to work and create something out of nothing, but unfortunately it didn't work out. But the game's not over here yet. 6.4 left to go. And that shot there is going to make it a two possession game and that's going to send the fans to the exit here at mile one. Sorry, that's Carson at the line. Thought it was Gentry Carson with the great play. Got to give the man credit. If he makes a uh, big steal, you got to give him credit there. It was Gentry Thomas with the steal. Carson with the icing on the take from the field free throw line. But I tell you what, we talked a little bit about the sleepiness of the edge maybe starting off this second half, but they certainly made this interesting at the end. What a great effort there by St. John's. As the third quarter really, uh, really hurt the edge. Yeah, they were able to come back and make it close and make this turn this into a tough fight and a good game, but that third quarter having to dig out of that hole really hurt them. This is a good chance here for the team, like a great game for the team to, you know, kind of come together, learn how to play together, especially in these tight situations. These are what really build team chemistry and really help the team progress throughout the year. Absolutely, absolutely, Ryan. Like I said earlier, there are no championships handed out in November. Um, very, very impressed. The edge probably could have just packed up and went away and licked their wounds and waited for Sunday, but they didn't. They, they used their bench. Uh, I think they got a great effort tonight from uh, Guillaume Bucard early on. And you can say, I, I do think Maurice Jones Sr. He certainly was the man later on. There's a smart play there. Wright Jr. lays it in, but nice smart play by Tate letting them take it. And that, in, that injury Salerno. to Junior Cadogan really hurt them, I, I think. Cadogan was playing so well and setting things up so nicely in the first half. And that injury really hurt them in the second half. 94-91, timeout called by Salerno, only three seconds left. They're just looking to get the ball inbounded here. Then it's game over. Should the edge. Edge is gonna to try to force a turnover here. Oh, yeah. And hopefully get a shot up. Yep, little quick turnover, catch, shoot. Bob's your uncle, that's the way to do it. Only easy to draw on paper though. Yeah, it's much more difficult to, uh, to put that into fruition. Absolutely. Folks, we're going to be back here Sunday. I believe the game time is 4 o'clock. You can correct me if I'm wrong, Ryan. Check out the St. John's Edge website for the time. We will be back and we'll have to call the call of the rematch here between Moncton and St. John's. And look at Jaron Skeet. He's up on the floor. He's into this. I, I give that young man credit. Not a lot of minutes. Played well when he was in there, but really into this game for St. John's. Full credit to him. Great guy to have on your team. Clearly very invested, high energy guy. Sondam Singh on the game. floor to, uh, I'm assuming he's gonna try to stop that inbound. Yeah, he's, he's gonna use his size and his height to try to disrupt the inbound here by... Uh, Things got a little harder for Doug Harry Jr. trying to get around the big man from India. Harry Jr. puts it in play. And we got Gentry. four guys on the floor here. 
Yeah, that's pretty interesting. It was like a dominoes game there. They all <laughs> fell down. Yeah. Safe to say there's a bit of holding going on there. Yeah, I would say. We don't have the flavorage of the instant replay on that one, but there's no doubt. And, you know, some Carol English, eh? The veteran player he is. He's at home. Tough night at the office. Battling hard to the very end. I, I like that. I really do. Well, this one guy who's got zero quit in him. Carl, to be playing at his age, to be playing this high of a level, it's testament to how hard he works and you know, some, what he's willing to give up. Got some action going down on the Moncton bench. Now one of the players not in uniform. I rate at what's going on here. Uh, Carl talking a little bit of trash, I think. It's a big foul shot here for Thomas. A miss, quick up the floor, maybe there's time. You never know. But he did not get the miss, so ball's gonna be lobbed up the floor a long way. Falls into the hands of the Magic, and that'll do it. Your final score this one tonight, Moncton Magic, 95 to St. John's Edge, 91. Your final thoughts, Ryan, on this one here tonight. Uh, tough game for the edge, but first game at home. First game for a lot of these guys playing together. Um, you know, good effort defensively, especially in the first half. Got things going offensively in the second half. A lot of stuff to work on, but a lot of stuff to build on. So I think it's a good effort by the edge, and I think we're going to see a different team here on Sunday. So there you have it. Ryan Brockerville will get the final word on this one tonight. Final score, Moncton 95, St. John's 91. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back Sunday. All right, Steve and Ryan, thank you very much for that. So the final is Moncton 95, St. John's Edge 91. They lose their home opener, but it was a game that could have gone either way. It, you know, it became very tight. I mean, St. John's giving Moncton the biggest run for their money yet this season. Sure. Moncton's three, well, 4-0 on the season now, but... Sure. Definitely the closest game they've had mm -hmm. so far. First time they've never cracked 100? Yeah, yeah, based on what I'm seeing here. Also, mm -hmm. the closest game for them. I mean, right. four points. Mm -hmm. And you know what? In this game, you look at all the, uh, the missed rebounds and the missed shots. This game could have had a whole different different ending yeah. but uh, we want to take a look at some highlights real quick and some of the the, the highs and the lows. We'll start with this uh, Guillaume Bucard dunk that uh, got the crowd riled up. Yeah, look at everybody just stands on their feet right away. This definitely revitalized the team, I almost want to say, brought some life back to them. And we saw them go on a bit of a roll after this, really just yeah. toppling over top there. Yeah, well, you talk about the plays that got the, the fans out of their seats. The next one we're going to see got us out of our <laughs> seats, and this was um, Maurice Jones Sr. Yeah, just going in on this line drive here and then taking the foul and one going to shoot for, well, getting the point and going to shoot for one. So three points there, which definitely was another big turnaround point for the team late in the game here, really trying to come back from a bit of a deficit. I think yeah. they were down by 13 at that point. Yeah, they almost. needed a three point play just to get back into things. Yeah. And just how different could the outcome of this game have been? Take a look at this last turnover. Yeah, this is this is a tough one here because three points. That's all the edge needed to get back into this. Three points and turnovers. Yeah. They were, but you know what? That was the game. It was. Yeah. You know, three points here, and it would have been a tie, and it's who knows what could have happened. So, yeah. a lot closer than you know. There were mistakes made, and uh, this edge team we probably didn't see at their full potential. No. Gave a very powerful Moncton team a good run for their money tonight. Oh, definitely. I mean, really tightening things up in the second half of this game, in the fourth quarter especially, mm -hmm. um, from what we saw out there. But, you know, little things that need to be worked on and, and definitely will be. So I'm sure we'll see a lot more come Sunday. Yes, and Sunday's when they're back at it. Both teams at Mile One. Tickets available at the Mile One Center box office or mileonecenter.com. And we will be here on Sunday afternoon at 3.30 to watch these two teams go back, back at it again. Uh, Bill Hart, Kellyanne Roberts, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Have a great night, and we'll be back on Sunday on Rogers TV.